average age of my viewers is low. That's not really true, actually. My average age is probably around 24. All right, here we go. Meet Merp. Welcome, everybody, to patch 7.22. It just came out. It's 8 p.m. I'm here for the long haul. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, let's hop into it, into the Dota 2 patch. Oh, God. So here it is. Feels moderately long, long, but not too long. Um, first thing, uh, oh yeah, first things first. Um, as with all patch patches that I read through, I have not read this yet. Um, I'll tell you how much I know. All I know is that every hero got scepters added based on the tweet that the Dota 2 Twitter put out. So it's finally here. Um, obviously, a lot of people, I'm sure, are memeing at Suns fan right now because it's something he's been asking for for a long time. Uh, thanks for the sub, guys. I'm not going to say thank you for every sub when they pop up in case uh, I'm, I'm distracted. But um, but thanks guys for the support today. I appreciate it. Um, okay, so new scepter upgrades for all the twenty four remaining heroes without an upgrade that includes Morphling. Um, who else? Um, Morphling, Bris no Bristleback has one shit. There's not that many, actually. Dragonite doesn't have one. Most of these guys have one. Lycan doesn't have one. Didn't have one. Now he has one. Underlord. There's a couple. Uh, I did not want to go there. Okay. Uh, updated various old scepter upgrades. Okay. Scepter can now be consumed as a buff by purchasing a 2000 gold recipe upgrade. Scepter buffs do not grant secondary stat bonuses. Okay. So basically... Assuming that the Alk one isn't changed, it basically means that any hero now, when they're 6-slotted, can also buy themselves an Aghanim Scepter. It can be a 6-slot for any hero, which is arguably good for carries. PA doesn't have an Axe, for example. Um, so that's kind of cool. It's like another way to I don't know, make the game a little bit interesting. Although 2,000 gold extra is pretty expensive. It's what, 4,000 or 6,000 and uh, 600 gold. A lot of gold uh, to upgrade. God, I wish I wouldn't do that. Um, definitely expensive. Roshan now drops a consumable scepter buff item. Third Roshan will randomly drop either a consumable scepter item or a refresher shard. The fourth Roshan has both. You can select Roshan to see his inventory and find out what items will drop. That's really cool. I love that. Very cool. Wow. Um, fourth Roshan is going to drop literally a 4,400 gold item. That's insane. A permanent 4,400 gold item. That's so cool. Yo, I'm rushing a lot more now. Holy crap. That's so awesome. Could give it to supports where it's really good. That's that's really cool. Um, add a new visual effect under heroes that have scepter upgrade. This is an old Dota 1 thing that people used to like. You could see auras under people. They would look like... You could, it was for like a Warcraft 3 Frozen Throne and Warcraft 3... Um, thing that got tied into Dota Vlad's aura had a specific aura underneath AC shoes, all that stuff. Um, and some heroes did have scepter upgrade up, upgrades as well, like um, Leshrax. He'd get these spikes that came out of his body. Uh, his his body, I think, glitches. You would become more frosty. There's a couple other examples of scepter upgrades being visible on heroes, but um, I, did they add one for every single hero? If so, cool. All right, Mars and Io being added to captain's mode. We'll see how that goes. Uh, Mars is a good hero. Um, a little bit broken, but not like the most broken. I expect he will be picked. He's like a team fighter, initiator, stunner kind of hero. Um, Io, from what I've seen, is busted, but I haven't played him since they changed him again. Um, I just know that Io Luna was really obnoxious for a while, but I think Luna maybe got nerfed enough where that's fine now. Um, deny experience granted to the enemy. The player being denied increased from 35 to 40 percent. That means when you get denied, you're getting slightly more experience than you used to. Originally, this number was at 25%, so this is a pretty big increase. Um, death cost changed from 50 plus net worth divided by 40 to net worth divided by 40. So this means that the amount of gold that you lose when dying is been has been reduced. It's basically less bad to die early on. And in terms of you losing gold, it doesn't cost you nearly as much in the early game. Like if I'm level 1 and I die, you're not going to lose barely any gold. So if we do the math really quick... Your typical net worth at level 1 is 600, because that's about how much gold you get, right? So if we divide that by 40, that means when I die now, I'm going to lose 15 gold at level 1. Whereas before, you were losing 50 plus 15. So you would lose 65 gold level 1 before. 
uh, if you died. Now you're only going to lose yeah, 15. So saving gold is certainly more of a vi viable strat, and fighting for bounties is less dangerous now. Um, a little bit less. Also, if you get a kill early on, or if you're a part of kill early on, and you die, you're going to lose much less of that gold that you just gained, which is another big thing. Because if I get an assist, I'm usually not getting that much gold early on in level 1. It's usually not more than, I would guess, like 50 or 60. So if you spend all your gold, and then you're a part of a kill, but you don't get the kill, it's a, you're going to be keeping a lot more of that gold that you just gained. So probably just encourages people to do things that get them gold and die for it a little bit in, in the early part of the game. You could argue maybe it's a buff to roaming or something like that. Um, kill streak XP bounty increased. That is I think that means if you have a kill streak, the amount of experience that you give when you die is going up by a lot actually. So if you have any kill streak at all, it goes up a lot on the base. This is a lot. This is almost a tome worth. I mean, it doubled basically. And eighteen hundred for the, the highest level is is a really big deal. So this is basically comeback mechanics. Um, experience requirement to reach level 5 and 6 has been reduced by a tiny bit. Experience required to reach level 19 increased by 100 each level. 19 plus. So that probably means to hit level 25 it costs you... It might be a lot more experience, like 2,000 or something. If it's 100 each level... Or does it just mean like 600 more? I'm not sure. Range creeps experience now increases by 8 per upgrade cycle every 7.5 minutes. That means Midasine range creeps is definitely really, really important now, I would, I would argue. There's probably a point in time where Midasine range creeps is better than neutral creeps too, I would guess. I'm not sure though. I, I don't know what range creep experience is exactly right now. They've changed it a lot. Siege creeps base attack time increased. This means they attack slower. This is the amount of time that it takes to attack once, so up to three. Siege Creeps now spawn two units at 35 minutes instead of 30 minutes. So slightly delays that, and Siege Creeps can no longer be dominated and changed or converted. This is probably needed. Um, dominating Siege Creeps is a little bit too good. Um, and this should cover Enchantress, and uh, Enchantress here, and Chen. Because taking Siege Creeps and then increasing their damage with your second skill is just a little bit too busted. Um, just allows you to push so well too, and you can do like kind of abusive things like iron shelling them, um, things like that. So this is probably for the best. Siege creeps is just a little bit too good at pushing. It's gonna allow the game to be slowed down. There's gonna be a little bit less cheesy stuff now. Tier three towers damage increased uh, to 175. That's three plus. That's the the threes and the fours. So the towers are gonna be able to defend themselves a little bit better. Tier one tower protective aura. Armor bonus increased by another point. That's a huge amount of armor. Three armor AOE is massive. And the tier twos are four to five. So defending towers is going to be easier now. Is basically what this is saying. And it's it's diving towers is slightly harder. I mean, this isn't the most survivability. I think it's only like, what, 6%-ish? It scales a little bit now. Um, but still, diving towers is going to be harder with physical damage, by the way, not magic. Magic damage is going to ignore all this. That's another thing to keep in mind. But if you're diving towers and, right, and you need to right-click a hero a lot, it could make a difference. Tier 2 plus towers now have a multi-shot attack when Glyph is atta activated. Attacks up to two additional targets. That is super fucking cool. Really like that, because now if um, you're being split push, but the creep wave isn't like massive, but it's big, you can just Glyph, and not only is it going to defend your tower, but it's also going to kill the creep wave a lot faster. And that combined with this first change is really huge. Like, you could just glyph to do more damage now. You don't even have to worry about using it just for defensive purposes. You actually might want to save it for when your opponents dive. Now, keep in mind, it's only 2+. plus. So that means your tier 2s, your tier 3s, your tier 4s. Holy shit, imagine, like, tier 4s with glyph activated. Like, if somebody gets in the wrong place, there's a point between the tier 3 towers and the 2 tier 4s, because it's like, kind of like this, let's say, mid-racks. If somebody goes here, they can be attacked by all the towers. Or, hypothetically, you could get, like, the whole enemy team there. Or you could do some, like, RP into skewer play with glyph. And then all the towers are just going to attack super fast. I think that's really cool. It gives uh, Glyph another uh, benefit, basically. Also potentially makes your tier 1 towers... I don't know if there's refreshing Glyph. Is that usable offensively? Because your tier 1 tower will die. You'll refresh your Glyph. You could use it again, hypothetically. Um, but I, I really like this. It's going to definitely help with um, kind of running you lineups and stuff like that. More armor... They have split attacks. It'll be easier to defend tier 2s, probably. Especially if you have wave clear. If you kill all the creeps, 
and then the tower's also hitting like four, three, three heroes. That's a lot of damage, for sure. Um, slightly adjusted radiant safe lane, radiant safe lane, hard camp position, and the train nearby. Okay, we'll have to go take a look at that in a bit. Reduce the chase duration of the hard camp neutrals on the radiant safe lane area. So this probably means you can't pull them directly down now. I would, I would guess. Because before, if you cut enough trees, you could pull them straight down. Um, probably removing, if I had to guess, they're probably removing this because Radiant has an advantage, uh, a percentage advantage in the game, and they're probably trying to reduce some of those benefits. Um, Radiant Middle Tier 2 Tower is now moved further to the left, no longer has vision over the big camp on the right. Okay. It was pretty far right before. Like, you couldn't swing past it to get to the middle lane. Like if you go from the radiant middle, that hard camp, and try to go to the mid lane, you have to go through that weird place or walk around. Maybe I shouldn't explain this too much without vision. Uh, but it not spotting the big camp is probably, it's a it's like a small, a small advantage for Dyer. If Dyer is getting ready to pressure the tower, the fact that the tower doesn't spot the camp itself means that if the radiant during daytime aren't gonna easily be able to see if there's a hero there. Is minimum what it does so it's like a small little advantage that might lead to some like better vision or team fights for the radiant team and removing that is going to give them a slightly lower win chance adjusted tree line to the right of the radiant middle tier 2 tower okay we'll have to check that out too uh, radiant mid lane medium camp now is two layers of trees behind it okay this is the other issue with radiant mid is that you can walk from mid and go over to the other camp you can eat one tree and then you can easily stack or clear that camp without having to walk all the way around. So that now that it, if it has two layers of trees, that means that it's gonna take longer. It's gonna take a quelling blade and more time to cut through two, or it's gonna take two tangos to cut through. And therefore, um, for like range shields, they're not easily gonna be able to stack the camp or um, auto attack it or drag it to the left anymore. So that's another, these are all radiant nerfs to try to bring down the radiant win advantage. So it basically looks like they found a couple small ways where radiant has advantages that are, that are a little small. Um, not insignificant, but they're there, and they're trying to remove them a little bit. Adjusted various dire neutral spawn boxes. I would guess this means that it's easier to stack dire camps now, if I had to guess, uh, because all of these are pro radiant or are basically they're anti radiant. They're nerfs to radiant side, so I would assume there's also a dire buff corresponding with it. Um, illusions can now life steal. Life steal now works against enemy illusions. Calculated pre illusion amplifications. Okay, I was a little worried. About, I was a little um. I'm happy with this. Um, this is something that's always been in the game uh, for as long as I can remember, um, that you just couldn't lifesteal if you hit an illusion. So if you attack the wrong units, then you're just not getting lifesteal. Um, illusions being able to lifesteal, I think is, there's always the icon, like it looks like they're lifestealing, but they're not. Um, I'm trying to think, this is actually mostly gonna matter for Chaos Knight, actually. Chaos Knight is by far the biggest, this is a buff to Chaos Knight. Because Chaos Knight naturally has lifesteal built into his passive, so, and they, and he gets a crit. So every five seconds his illusions will crit and they actually do a lot of damage because they do 50, 75, 100% of the damage that CK does. So if you don't have AOE against CK, it's gonna be really awful now, unless there are CK nerfs later on because you're automatically getting lifesteal. So let's say you're hitting for like 200, your illusions hit for 100 and they still crit and get a lot of lifesteal. So this is a really big, a really big CK buff, I would argue. Um, and lifesteal working against enemy illusions, I think this is fine. Uh, it's like, it'll help against things like PL and, and stuff like that, for sure. Falling items no longer partially shareable. Ring of Regen, Ring of Tarrasque, Sage's Mask, Ring of Health, Void Stone, Perseverance. The reason they removed this is because a lot of, in the pro scene, what was not uncommon was you would pick somebody like Enigma that could jungle, you would deny the range creep, you'd buy a Ring of Regens, and you'd give them to your offlane hero. So your offlane would technically be offlane solo, but he would also have like one or two free Rings of Regen in his inventory. And then later on, you would give those rings back to the um, Enigma when he would make Helm of Dominator. So it would be like a laning benefit. So they just, uh, I don't know what partially shareable means. Maybe that means like you can give it to somebody, but they can't, but but they could benefit from the base items like the regen. So maybe if it's every item is shareable, but these items are also partially shareable. I'm not sure. Roshan base armor increased by two. The attack damage per minute increased from four to six. Okay, so he's gonna do more damage over time. He has more base armor. His last hit gold bounty range changed to be averages unchanged. Okay, so it's just more consistent. It's less of a big range, which I think is very good. 
and the last hit experience bounty reduced. So basically Roshin is harder and it gives you less experience, but it's definitely harder. It's gonna take longer too. I think that's the I think that's important. That's why they increase the armor by two. Because things like medallion or the if you if you have the right lineup, you can rush so fast. If anything, what this is gonna do is it's gonna make it um much harder or moderately harder to rush in pubs, I would argue, where you're not coordinated with medallions and everyone being there and stuff like that. It's gonna be harder for people to solo rush as well. Except unless your Ursa Ursa is still gonna be fine, obviously. But um Yeah, I would say it's it's gonna nerf Roshin a little bit in pub games, but in pro games it's just a little bit harder, not that much more. Um, Seder Tormentor on Holy Aura HP regen reduced by 0.5. That's fine. Um, it's going to be a slight nerf to Doom, and that's about it. Really, Enchantress. Maybe you could argue. Timer that credits a player for a kill. Um, when Radiant Dire get the final hit is increased from 20 to 30 seconds. Okay, so what this means is that um, previously on the patch, um, so if you did t if you did damage to a guy and then he walked away and then died under a tower, then you would get credit for the kill. But now, uh, with if the, if it was within twenty seconds, by now it's thirty seconds. I didn't know there was a timer on it. I I, I guess I knew there was a timer, but I just didn't really. I, don't know, I maybe I didn't understand it fully. But now, basically, if you deal damage to somebody and then they walk over and die to a tier two tower within 30 seconds, you get credit for the kill, which is kind of a big deal, because I think if you get credit for a kill that happens outside of your experience range, I think you stood sh should still get the experience gain, because that's how it works for heroes like, I don't know, like people that have like long range abilities or something like that. I think I think they changed it so that everybody gets experience. If you gain get a kill, but they're not within experience range of you, you will get experience for it no matter where they are, as long as your hero's alive. So this is kind of a big thing. It's gonna make it harder for people to um, go to a lane as a support, cast all their spells, take a bunch of damage, then walk around the map to go to the enemy tier 2 to die to the tower when no enemy heroes are around, and then um, they the enemy team only gets a small amount of gold, enough where it's completely worth it. Then you teleport back into the lane, full health, full mana with more items, and you go and do the same thing again, rinse, repeat. It's um, It kind of feels like you have to play like that sometimes, but it's basically going to mean that um, regen trading and items you bring to lane are going to be a little bit more important. It could slow down the laning stage. It's going to slow down the laning stage a little bit. Um, heroes can now have non-standard initial attack speed values. Okay, so what this means is... Um, looks like they're changing similar things over here. It's like a new way to buff a nerf. So, so basically all heroes have something called a, base, a BAT or a base attack time. Base attack time is the time that it takes for you to attack and how often you can attack, basically. So everybody has a BAT, the average is 1.7. If you're slow, it's more like two. If it's really fast, it's like 1.4. Juggernaut, Anti-Mage, those guys have really, really low BATs, which is good. Really slow BATs are like Spirit Breaker, Treant, Protector, for example. So if you buy a lot of attack speed items, if you buy attack speed items, basically, people with low BATs, or sorry, high BATs, like Spirit Breaker and Treant, they don't, it doesn't benefit them as much to have attack speed, basically. But if you have really low BATs, like Juggernaut and Anti-Mage, you're getting extra benefit from attack speed. So what they're doing here is, rather than having to change the BATs of these heroes, or um, changing their agility gain, or base agility, which is obviously affects your attack speed, naturally, what they're going to do is increase their attack speed, but leave their BAT at the same place. So it still scales the same as the way it was previously designed, but it's still gonna be a little bit better early on. So Abaddon, for example, really crappy agility and agility gain. I don't know what his BAT is. I would assume it's relatively okay, um, but he basically just has 15 more attack speed now. It's like if you gave him a gloves of haste just about, so level one, it's just gonna be higher. Broodmother, same thing, except it's much higher. So Broodmother's gonna attack much faster level one. Um, Crystal Maiden's gonna attack faster. It seems like, well, some of these are pretty solid. 25 extra attack speed for Gyro. We're on a silencer. 20 attack speed for Slark is pretty massive, I would argue. Pretty or at least very, very good. Weaver. These are these are pretty big buffs. This is literally just a 20 attack speed increase. But we'll have to see um, the other patch stuff for any of these heroes to see how much it really matters. Heroes kind of have non-standard base mana regen value. Same thing, same principle here. Heroes uh, have base regen, base mana regen, and then um, it goes up based on how much intelligence they have or how many items that they purchase. That increase their int or inc increase their mana regen. So now everybody can have a standard rate. Um, it's just, or they had a standard rate, but now they're going to be adjusted a little bit. 
So clinks, I don't know what the average is. I feel like it's probably like 0.75 or something was probably the average. I haven't read the patch yet. Get out of here. Um, clinks has low base mana regen. The reason they've nerfed it is because if you buy a lot of mangoes, you can actually arrow constantly. It's I think it's completely reasonable. The downside is that he's going to have to buy more mana regen items. Um, Lich, I, I'm not sure what the base is. Not sure what the, the, the base is. Um, so I guess I can't really comment too much. Techies has more base. Tinker has lower mana regen. I don't know. Not sure what these mean, to be honest, because I don't know what the base value is. I could look it up, I guess. Uh, let me look it up really quick. Mechanics. Mana regeneration. Um... Creeps. Does it show base heroes? I see what the creeps ones are and the summons. Maybe there is no base, naturally. So I guess uh, there there used to be a base, but I guess they're I guess it got removed. It was zero. Okay, that's kind of what this page is making me think. So it was zero, so these are mana increases for all of these heroes. Small one for Lich, or Clinks, moderate for Lich. Basically all these heroes are going to have a lot more techies, going to have way more mana regen at level one than before. I actually like this tree one. When I play tree, you feel like you have to buy like all these movement speed items, and it's kind of iffy to cast a lot of leech seed. This might help him even go like one four four kind of a skill build. Eh, that, that's kind of ridiculous to say because this is such a little amount. It's going to matter in the laning stage mostly. But just little mana regen buffs to these heroes that kind of need them. I don't know if Pugnant necessarily does, but... But yeah. Um, okay. Observer Ward's cost decreases again. Cool. Gold Bounty is increased. And the Experience Bounty is slightly increased. Uh, but this is kind of a lot. So it's a 50-minute game. It's basically Wards are going to give an extra 100 gold late game. Which is a lot. It's quite a bit of gold. Uh, like 75 to 100 extra gold. So before, let's say, 60 minute game, that would be, um, I'm sorry, two divided by minutes. Is this math right? Am I crazy? Oh, I see. So they've confused us here. They've basically said, hey, we're going to put a plus, but then we're going to use this to be two per minute but really it's two times a minute. This this is this is confusing. It should be 100 plus two in parentheses minute to 100 plus four in parentheses minute. They've mixed their units. That's a no-no. So um, at a 100 minute game, it's um, 220 gold here. And um, a 60 minute game would be 240, 340. That's a shitload of gold. So wards are worth a lot of gold. So in some ways, it's actually beneficial if your team just stops warding, because dang it, they're they're gonna get a lot of gold out of you. That's so much gold. That's actually so much gold. Am I am I really wrong? I'm pretty sure I'm right. But yeah, it's a lot of gold. It's a lot of gold. If you get Yeah, I think I'm right. Um, yeah, it's a lot of gold. If you're if you're getting like 300 gold per observer, what do you find? It's a buttload of gold. So that's gonna help supports a lot get more items, or the carries that steal them. Sentry ward uh, cost decrease by 25. So dewarding is gonna be even easier. It's gonna be easy to buy a lot of wards, and it's gonna be easier to um, deward them. Now I have a stock limit, max limit of 10. Oh, okay. So this is one nerf to sentry. It's kind of interesting. So this is something that they. Basically, that came about to all the buffs of Sentry Wards is that Sentry Wards became really valuable to just because the AOE went up a lot um, and the duration that they'd stay on the map would stay up very long. So it became very easy to like just buy a bullet of sentries as a five position and you just have to blanket an area to make sure you get the, all the wards. Um, and with these becoming more expensive and the cost of Sentry Wards going down, I, I got a little scared like, oh god, sentries are getting really good here. But if they have a stock limit, I mean, if they start at a capacity of four, it means that you can run out of sentry wards. You can still have dust, but 
certainly using sentry wards poorly is a very bad thing, actually. Um, but they replenish every 70 seconds. So it's like, what, one, to, one a minute? That means you can buy a maximum of like 64 sentry wards throughout a game, which is way more than anybody ever buys. The most people ever buy is like 30 to 40 in an entire game, right? Although the cost with the cost going down, it's a little bit cheaper. But it means that you can't necessarily just like hit this period of the game where you're like, we need a lot of sentries and buy them all. If, you're, if your team has been also buying them, you could run out of sentries really fast. It's a new way to grief too, unfortunately. Uh, the initial 10 minute stock now provides two tomes and has a five minute use cooldown. Okay, so what this means is that two people can gain extra levels at the 10 minute mark. I'm guessing this means that two are available to purchase and the same person can't use them both. They could if they wait five minutes. They could use it at the 10 minute mark when they purchase it and then hold it for five minutes and then use the second one. But it'd be better obviously if they both buy them that two different players use them. So very interesting. Um, well, it'll definitely help supports get a little bit ahead here. Um, is usually how they're used. Uh, sometimes cores will buy them if they're greedy, but in general, but generally it should still be supports that are a little bit behind on levels. But in some cases, cores could probably get away with using these. Um, but yeah, it depends on the heroes. Um, slow duration on Scotty's change to three seconds. Um, and now the difference is you're slowed more depending on what hero you are. Okay. So rather than it like being the, the amount of seconds of slow being based on who is throwing the slow, it is three seconds for anybody that throws it. And the slow differs for what heroes it lands on. So obviously a 35% slow against melee heroes is really, really good because melee heroes need to kite and chase and stuff like that. So they've reduced the slow amount against those melee heroes down to 20%. So Scotty as a ranged core is going to be way less good against melee heroes. So you could argue this is a buff to heroes like Lifestealer who go magic immune and um, want to be able to running around uh, attacking people and not getting kited um, against heroes like uh, Wraith King or something like that. Uh, but the slow amount against ranged heroes is really fucking good now. 45% is kind of bonkers good. In my, in my opinion. So against like supports and stuff like that, or against range carries, Scotty is really good now. That's what it feels like. I mean, it's only a 10% increase, but this feels, especially when you compare these two, it seems insane. Um, might see Scotty more playable in, uh, in certain matchups, for sure. It could uh, change things up. Attack speed slow no matches the movement slow values. Okay, so against ranged, and this is actually really big too. So against ranged heroes, Scotty is really, really good now. 45% attack and movement speed slow. That's super, super awesome. So I would I would argue that this is going to become like a situational item based on generally the carries that you're matched up against, I would argue. I mean, maybe if you're a support, like um, like Morphling's going to be really happy with Iascotti, frankly, because if he's going for supports or something, he's going to super slow them. But it's also good against like range cores for all the slow values. It's, it's really good. Uh, Helm of the Dominator uh, nerfed by 300 gold, has a 300 gold recipe now. Before it was uh, Gloves of Haste, Headdress of Rejuvenation, and a Ring of Health. So now its cost is going to go at yeah, 2175. It's way more expensive. And it's much harder to make. Because before you could run out, the either item was really easy, actually. Uh, the Headdress was the most complicated to make. It would take a courier. But the other two items you could buy at shops. You could buy the Gloves of Haste from the side shop. You could buy the Ring of Health from the secret shop. Now you have to fly out a recipe in, in addition. So if you buy the recipe and bring that out early, then it's going to make you less effective until you finish the other, other items. So this is going to delay Helm of the Dominators by, I'm sure, 20, not not counting the extra, yeah, the fact that you have to farm 300 extra gold, but it's going to delay buying Helm of the Dominator in a big way. And now that you can't also, now that now that you can also not take neutral cam or catapults, the item is just simply not as good. It's still going to be useful on a lot of heroes, like heroes like Lycan are still going to buy it. Uh, maybe Darkseer too, but it's definitely not as good when you can't take catapults. It's going to take a lot more micro though. Like using neutral creeps effectively is not as much harder than uh, not much harder, but moderately harder than it is just to use, abuse catapults, where it which just you just attack a tower. It's kind of stupid. Uh, pipe of insight, HP regen, or reduce. So they're redu they're nerfing death ball, much like the tower ner uh, buff that we talked about with Glyph. Uh, mechanism aura nerfed as well. Guardian greaves aura nerfed. Threshold bonus armor reduced. Okay, so now when you're low on health, you only get 10 armor instead of 15. So moderate nerf. To, it's not like the biggest nerf, but it's it's definitely a nerf. Uh, Mask of Madness, Moon Suit bonus increase. I like this. I think this item was 
it was okay before, but it wasn't super incredible. 25 base movement speed increase was like, it was all right, but it wasn't the, the most game changing thing. I like that the, they're increasing this. Um, would make, it'll make it better on heroes like Sniper and stuff like that. Rod of Atos strength and agility reduced by two. This item was a little bit overbuilt. Item was, it's very easy to purchase it, interrupts TPs, that kind of a thing. So, uh, so many people buy it. Death Prophets, Razors, um, Vipers, a very popular item right now. Um, Drum of Endurance, mana regen reduced by a tiny amount, 0.25 per second, it's not much. Vlad's mana regen reduced by a tiny amount. Spirit Vessel heal reduction reduced. I think this is a good change. And current health is damage per second reduced. Spirit Vessel is just like one of those items that just like fucks so many games. Like it's like, if, if it's a really good spirit, if it's a good Spirit Vessel game, it's like, it just completely breaks some heroes. And 70% is just such a big amount. I, I get that there definitely was a problem with like, that when they put all those like high regen values, they did also have to put Spirit Vessel in because otherwise some of those heroes, when they when talents came out, um, it would have been way too hard to kill some of those guys. But 70% is a lot, 60 is a little bit more fair. It's it's going to be more counteractable Spirit Vessel without having to buy like Yules or Manta or Lotus Orb or some other Dispel, so, which I think is pretty fair, personally. Um, and some of these like regen aura things will make a small difference there, you know. Um, Wraith Band nerfed again, attack speed from 6 to 5, it's fair. Item still really, really good. Agility Heroes still buy like 3. Um also a nerf to draw is probably the hero hit hardest by this it's not that much i mean it's like one attack speed per wraith band right so they're losing like three attacks it's very small it's very very small but just a little bit of a nerf to them uh fix multiple bloodstones stacking the mana regen application like nerfed up nerfed a storm here <laughs> uh buying multiple bloodstones was doable because it has uh, the, what was stacking was the 200 percent mana regen if you'd buy multiple bloodstones that aspect would um exist so you double your mana you'd increase well you wouldn't double it but when you buy your first bloodstone, excluding the, um, the 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 charges mana regen that it gives you, it would double your mana regen basically. And then when you buy the next one, it would increase your mana regen by the same amount that the previous one did. So if you have like 60 mana regen per second and you buy a bloodstone, all of a sudden you're up at 120. If you buy another bloodstone, it would hypothetically put you at 180. So it was just a, a very good way to get a buttload of mana regen. And now you can't buy multiples on Storm anymore. So that's the only here that this is going to affect. That's the only hero that you'd buy multiple blood stones on. A bad end getting nerfs because the hero is one of the best fives right now. Base attack speed increased. Big nerf here. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, Miss coil range reduced. I would have maybe liked to see this be scaling personally rather than just like a flat huge nerf. Because this is one of the things that I, I dislike about uh, uh, Omni Knight right now is that if you do want to play him as a support, his cast range is so garbage on his heal that it's like it just doesn't feel playable anymore, which isn't very fun. Um, I, mean, I get Abaddon is definitely ahead of his glory. He's had a good couple months, but um, I wish it would scale up a little bit, personally. So, so now your Miss Coil range and your Aphotic Shield are pretty close together. It's going to be harder to save people with Abaddon now. Um, but Miss Coil is definitely still very abusive. So that's one of the good things, that they're basically leaving it in as good. And yes, I'm, I'm going to read this in a second. I wanted to read the meta changes first. Level 15 talent uh, also nerfed a little bit. So basically, very small nerfs to Abaddon, actually. He got an attack speed bonus. He's got low agility. He got Miss Coil range reduced, which is going to make it harder to get kills abusively, meaning like you have to be a little bit better to get your kills, but he still has basically the same power that he had before. He has 15 less damage from the 15 talent because everybody gets that one. It's like pretty small nerfs, I would argue. It's really not that bad at all. You can still run with people and cast Miss Coil like four times and kill them. You just have to be closer to them and stay close to them. So... It's just going to be a lot harder to save allies that are out of position, or if you're out of position, basically. All right, rework scepter upgrade. Uh, while burrow time is active, anytime an ally takes more than 525 damage while within 600, 600 range of a battle, which is a huge range, by the way, an individual miscoil will automatically fire towards that ally. Okay, that's cool. So uh, before, the way that Scepter worked was it would basically mean that while your ulti was active, you would absorb some of the damage that your allies took, which would then heal you. But it was it's, it's kind of hard to see it happen, first of all. Um, and now it's going to kind of do something similar. If you shoot a miscoil from your hero to an ally, it will um, heal you because you're taking damage, and it's going to heal your ally. So anytime they take more than 525, is this kind of like Bristleback, basically? I would guess that Borrowed Time 
a bad end with a bristleback is busted because every time bristle takes what 230 damage or whatever he'll quill spray so now every two quill sprays he gets he gets a free um miss coil i would guess is how that works I don't know what the time period is or anything like that. I don't think it's just like, oh, if you take more than 525 damage. I think it's just like, if you've got 1500 health, you're going to get three miss coils hit on you while while Ags is active. So it's kind of cool. You could buy Ags. Oh, keep in mind, by the way, um, as, as we go through all these heroes, that um, I guess it's irrelevant for a bad end because he's not going to get six slotted or whatever. But... Um, yeah, it's kind of cool. If it, it, with the right lineup, you could definitely um, pull a bat in a, an X with like elk or something like that. Maybe kind of cool. Um, elk a, 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 a added scepter upgrade. Okay. So with scepter equipped or synthesized, which probably means like the bonus one, you gain a bonus 30, 30 damage and six percent spell amp for each scepter that you gave allies at any point in the game. Cool. Very cool. Thanks for the sub. Um, so it's not, it's actually not bad damage. 30 damage is okay. But what it basically does is gives you two things that you might want that are going to vary based on what build you do. So if you go right click build, it doesn't feel like a waste to give yourself a scepter. And if you are going radiance build, which is still super normal, you're getting spell amp, which is going to mean you do more radiance burn. And it's also going to increase the unstable concoction damage you do, which is really good. Um, I mean, if you give what, six of these? No, you can't give six, five. If you give five of these, you're looking at 30% spell amp, which is pretty fucking massive, actually. It's pretty massive. So kind of cool. Um, and the more ags you give, um, it's it's completely fine. I don't know if there would be many cases at all that I would want to give an ags to other people, or to yourself over other people. like. Like, think of it this way, um, and my understanding here is that Alk can still give Ags to people and they still get the stat bonus. Whereas, when heroes buy the Ags for themselves using that recipe, they don't get the stat bonus, is how it works. So, Alk will not only be able to give better scepters to everybody, but at some point he could give one to himself. But again, the bonus is so crap. 30 damage is, like, really mediocre. It's not big. The spell up is definitely better, but because any even physical-based elks are still going to be throwing strong concoctions and dealing acid spray damage, so this is still reasonable. But I, I can't... Basically, if, like, you only have two guys with ags upgrades on your team, you'd probably give two ags and then give yourself one, maybe. Before you start giving other people stats. And I'm just kidding. Everybody's an ags upgrade now. So I don't know. I, I just can't see myself. I, I just don't. I feel like I couldn't see myself giving myself an Ags here on Elk um, before giving like at least four other people Agnum Scepter first. At least. So, eh, whatever. It, it's it's basically, it's probably a way to make sure that Elk is like not left behind by everyone else getting Ag Scepters, I would argue. Okay. Ice Vortex mana cost reduced again. Thank God they did this. Uh, still a bit of an issue with the hero. Uh, 50 to 70 is kind of a big jump. 40, 40 60, 80, 100. This looks better. It scales more normally you don't like get two levels in it and you're like oh god i've doubled the man okay you do you do actually double the mana cost but um it'll help his mana problems a little bit uh, ice blast can no longer be seen on the mini map by enemies if they have true sight okay that's fine against really good players this is definitely an issue it's gonna be easier to land ice blast as a result if you're if you're paying attention you can definitely notice it it's like a weird you see like a red dot moving or something like that um um, Anti-Mage added Scepter Upgrade, Mana Void now kill, kills now add plus 70 seconds to the highest cooldown ability on the enemy hero. Cooldown starts once the enemy respawns, increases the stun duration by one second. If the target dies during this period, it is still counted as a Mana Void kill. Holy shit, that's good. Keep in mind, Anti-Mage gets six slotted really fast and very likely is going to be giving himself an X. Like against uh, look uh, against the right heroes this is really fucking good. If you if you're talking about some like big team fight ultimate hero like Enigma or Tide Hunter or something like that, you're adding 70 a full minute to their ultimate, which is already pretty long probably. Warlock things like that. Um against like Storm Spirit it doesn't really matter much unless you get Remnant, it would be kind of big if you think about it. If he doesn't use his uh, 
his pull and remnant is the longest ability and it gets added for 70 seconds that means when you respawn a storm you literally couldn't use static remnant to farm you would have to use ball lightning it would actually you could really this is kind of weird you could like really gimp a couple heroes but uh that's that's the point i guess it could really wreck a lone druid it's really really good against lone druid if they've used a bear and then you kill the bear they're actually just done their, their game is over because they can't summon a bear for like three minutes there's a couple cases where this is like bonkers good but it is still an eggs and they and getting a mana void kill on a lone druid is not easy anyway it's like there's a couple i don't know it's uh it's definitely interesting it's going to be obnoxious i think sometimes but it's not going to happen often arc warden uh, turn rate improved so you can turn around faster it's going to be easier to put a bubble behind you and then turn around and continue attacking Finkus dub fixed uh, Tempest double being unable to activate runes. Okay, add a separate uh, scepter grants new ability rune forge creates a random rune in front of you. Cooldown sixty. The selection of runes include bounty runes and power runes. Okay, interesting. Keep in mind that that's going to add a new ability for both Arc Wardens himself and his Tempest double. So you could hypothetically both spawn a rune and get a double damage. Have a double damage Arc Warden. You get haste illusions. All of these are, I mean, well, how many runes are those? Probably like seven runes. Arcane rune is really, really good, too. You would always spawn a rune before uh, using Tempest Double, probably. If you get an Arcane rune, shit's off the hook. This is actually potentially, I don't know if it's viable because it's still such a gamble. But like, if you, you're going to have a Midas, right? If you, if you get an Ags at some point and then you spawn a rune and you get an Arcane rune, boom, your Midas, you get to use your Midas like so many times. Because you would lower your cooldown of your Tempest Double. I guess that's on its own cooldown, so it wouldn't be a lowered cooldown. But either way, you get more Tempest Double, which is still farm. And you would get to use Midas more and all that stuff. It's potentially very cool. Um, you'll see, you could see some cheese stuff where maybe like support Arc Ward. I don't think, I don't know if that's going to be viable, but get a Morphling on your team, spawn runes, maybe get a DD. Don't necessarily need a bottle. Why bring a bottle when you could just buy an X, right? Um, level 10 talent, they buffing the uh, the talent that nobody ever gets, the 35 the thirty five attack speed, and the other talent that nobody ever gets, Spark Wraith cooldown. That'll put it at a 2 second cooldown, I believe. I, I'm down to see Arc Warden played in different ways, but it, it seems like the hero is just way too good in the way that everybody plays him, so nobody does anything else. But 35 attack speed is actually kind of a lot. 8% cooldown will definitely increase your farm rate and utility and stuff, but 35 attack speed is a lot. I don't know. Axe base damage and axe needed some buffs. Uh, base damage increased by three. Base armor increased by one. Scepter upgrade now causes Battle Hungry to be a 400 AOE target ability. Debuff still reduces enemy damage. That's a lot easier to use. The way it worked before is, it would make your Battle Hunger do 30 reduced enemy damage by 30% on one guy, and then if you got an ultimate off either on a creep or a hero, it would apply Battle Hunger in an AOE to everyone nearby. So it's pretty hard to use in an AOE of uh, an AOE way, but now it's pretty reasonable that you could actually buy Ags on Axe some games. Um, I don't know which games I would necessarily do it on, um, but playing Battle Hunger in an AoE to like a pushing lineup or something would be not bad. It does a pretty good amount of damage. Gives half speed when used on creeps. Okay, so now basically what this means is that you can Battle Hunger creeps if you want. Well, you could before, but it doesn't give you as much movement speed. But if you get an Ags and then you use it, Battle Hunger, it's going to give you a little it, it won't be a, a like insane basically because before what probably would happen is like oh if you do kill an enemy hero and he's by all these allied creeps or enemy creeps and they don't they aren't dead for some reason by axe spins and you'd probably become stupid fast on axe basically you'd max out but if you buy ags now and this if this was still in here you could just cast battle hunger on like a creep way with heroes and you would be max movement speed constantly which would be really broken you would basically buy ags and be max moon speed constantly. So this is going to not be as good. It'll be 6% per creep. So that's like, what, 30% movement speed from one creep wave, which is, it's like 90 movement speed. So hypothetically, Ags is like, in some ways, you can just fucking get it on Axe now. Just become max movement speed all the time. Like, if you get an Ags, you are going to be fast constantly just because you can cast Battle Hunger every five seconds. I guarantee right now Slax is playing Axe. You want to see? Damn it. <laughs> if if there was an Omni Knight changes, I'm sure he'd be playing X right now. Okay. Uh, Bane. Brain Sap Scepter now also reduces cast point by 50%. I think that's good. Um, I've never really tried Ags much. 
Um, never really feel you can't farm very fast on this hero. This will make it better, but I think this Ags is kind of garbage. But who knows? Maybe there's like a mid bane that you could do. You, like you could hypothetically play like a mid bane and go meteor hammer or something. That and that'll give you the ability to push creep waves and push towers and farm quicker and then possibly buy an Ags afterwards. Maybe, but I'm, I'm not sure. Level twenty talent increased from enfeeble attack speed reduction plus one twenty five instead. So enfeeble does like I think it's like one twenty at level four. I don't think I've ever seen somebody go like in Feeble steals attack speed. I don't know, maybe, maybe it's viable in there. Maybe you can go like mid bane, dominate the lane, go meteor, rush meteor hammer, get the armor talent or something. Just become like super tanky and then build an axe afterwards with Feeble steals attack speed. I don't know, maybe it's maybe it's dual. God, that, the other 20 talents so good. 50 movement speed is so good. All these talents are actually really good. Like, all the, all the, most of these talents are really good. Batrider, uh, Firefly cooldown is nerfed, so... Bat level 1 is not going to be as effective. You won't be able to do Firefly combos as often. Flame and Lasso Scepter secondary search radius increased by a little bit, so it's a little bit easier to grab two people with eggs. Um, rework Scepter on Beastmaster. Previously, it would... Why is my mouse wheel not working? Um, increase the cast range and lower the cooldown. It was pretty boring. Um, Sep Wild Axes have no cooldown. It can be used again once they have returned to Beastmaster. That sounds very fun. That sounds really fun, actually. Okay, and then they move the talent back. That sounds fair. Um, the Wild Axe's damage was at 15. If this was basically no cooldown Wild Axe's, I would like rush Ags by level 15 every single time, and then I would just throw Axe's. Keep in mind that this is broken because the Axe's increase the damage that Beastmaster does to enemy heroes um, or creeps or whatever. And that means that if you cast multiple Axe's on the same guy, you're increasing your damage more and more every time. Because I think every Axe increases your damage by like, I don't know, 12%, 10%, something like that. 12% by level 4. So if you throw Wild Axes on somebody, the first one will do 12% more damage, and the next one will do 24 more. Then you throw the next Axes, it's going to be 36 and 40. So if you throw enough Axes, you're doing a lot of damage to people. This is a huge... Uh, so they had to push it back to level 20, which makes sense. Um, they made it slightly better. On the bright side, the boar attack damage is much better at 15. So you can make your boars be really strong by level 15 now. Um... Which is kind of interesting. So now there's basically there's damage talents now at 15 and 20, and defensive talents at 15 and 20. So you get to basically balance survivability or, or more damage. Uh, Bloodseeker agility growth reduced. Why? Oh, probably for this. Um, so it's a nerf. Blood right mana cost reduced um, to be better early on. And Rupture is now lethal again. Deals. Okay, it's literally like they revert. They're like, all right, we fucked up Rupture, guys. Sorry. Reverse it. 30, 45, 60. This looks like the old numbers to me. The The cast range might still be reduced, but... No, it doesn't look like it. Looks like they just reversed it. They just put it back to what it was. Uh, Bounty Hunter Janata damage reduced uh, to be worse 10 at all levels, but not much. Uh, Shuriken Toss Scepter now also increased the cast range. Oh, that's good. That was probably really needed. So you could more feasibly get Ags now on uh, on Bounty Hunter. Because uh, the cast range was so low, you'd have to like track a bunch of dudes, and you'd have to Shuriken a creep, and then hope it bounces to the guys you want. But now you could actually just throw shurikens from across the map more or less it'll make more playstyles viable i could definitely see some cases where like a late game bounty hunter buys an axe maybe because the 20 janata gold steel one I, unless you're playing core i don't think that one's very good but if you're increasing your toss, shuriken toss damage up to 500 and it can bounce twice or something it means you could do like a thousand damage to two supports or something it's potentially very good oh yeah and they buffed the damage here i, I didn't pay attention to that until now but 125 damage increase is pretty big i would argue um thunderclap damage reduced by a little baby amount not much primal split scepter now also grants brewlings plus 100 movement speed i actually really like that i actually like buying eggs on brewmaster myself um 100 movement speed is massive for the for the earth brewling um but, but all in hand all, all, all whatever in purposes i can't remember the same um this is a brewmaster nerf for sure 
Uh, but for me, this is a Brewmaster buff because I like buying eggs on Brewmaster. Um, but 100 movement speed for the Earth Brewling is huge. I think it's ba He's really slow. He's like 250 or something. I don't know. He's really, really slow. 100 movement speed is huge. It's going to help you deal more damage. It's going to help you chase and deal, use your spells correctly, basically. Um, especially on like the uh, the Earth Brewling. That's the biggest one because you have to do you have to do an AOE clap. The other ones are really fast, but the Earth one is not. So them getting 100 movement speed overall is going to be really nice. You won't also necessarily have to always use the invis on the Storm Brewling to catch up, uh, catch up to people. Um, okay, Bristleback base armor increased by 1. Warpath damage per stack increased by 4 at all levels. So it'll be a lot better early on. Moderately better. Nasal Goo, Scepter AoE increased by a little bit. So Ag's be uh, benefits. This is all good for me. This is how I like playing Bristleback. I like doing a mix of survivability and right-click stuff. So I like the Warpath damage uh, buff. I think that, that makes me happy. Most people don't play it that way, but um, but I do sometimes. So I'm happy. They're just trying to diversify the hero a little bit. And overall, I think it's one of the lowest win rates of the last patch. So a base armor increased by one is going to help everybody win more on Bristleback. Uh, Broodmother base attack speed increase. We saw that added scepter upgrade. Um, increases spin web max count from 8 to 20. Moves to bonus from 70 to 100%. This should say 70% to 100% and removes movement speed limit. Okay, uh, that's potentially really busted. Um, if it removes the movement speed limit, buying boots on brood, well, that's if you have eggs, I guess. I like the fact that there's like 20, 20 webs available. I think this is really kind of what's needed with the hero because you can basically be... The problem is that like right now with Broodmother, you do this like... you. You like win your lane and then you hit a lot of creeps and then you just kind of like it's hard to transition kind of like you can split push a little bit i haven't seen i've never tried the spider talents genuinely i've never tried them but um people probably don't bother going with them to make your spiders do more damage and be a tank here because you've only got eight webs and the spider because the spiders are garbage off of webs they're just not good unless you have the webs so and you need like at least four webs in an area to be able to like mess around a little bit. One web doesn't cut it against anybody real relatively decent. As soon as you get off web, you're dead. So you need a lot of webs. And as a result, um, it's probably not worth going to spider talents, I would guess. I've never like I said, I've never done it. But um that's my assumption. So if you can increase the web count to twenty, you're gonna have a lot bigger area that you can run around and do spider stuff. And increasing the movement speed a little bit is nice. Um, and removing the movement speed limit is really, really nice, I would argue. Maybe not really, really nice, but in the right games, it could be huge, like really good. Um, basically means that increasing your base movement speed on Brood is more important than um, percentage-based items. It's one of the reasons Broods don't buy boots very often, because they'll increase your movement speed by like 40 or something. You buy a Windlace on Brood and it'd be better, basically. If you buy a Windlace on Brood with Ags here, the Windlace will make you run at 40 extra movement speed. Oh, well, that's that's actually way better than that, because you're increasing your base. Uh, no, that's not true. That's that's I, what I said was correct, because um, you're increasing your movement speed by twenty, and then you're also getting a hundred percent more bonus on the twenty you just got. So a uh, uh, windlace would be forty movement speed here, and, it, and it's like what? Uh, oh God, uh, um, 0.7 times two, three, uh, three, four, thirty-four. A windlace gives you thirty-four movement speed. Boots is probably like forty-three or something. So windlace is like almost better than uh, Boots is on Brood right now. So I think this is good. This will allow Brood to be Brood throughout the whole game, which I think is something that it's better. For, uh, it might be good, it might be bad, um, because it's kind of annoying. But in the same vein, it seems weird to like have this hero be this one play style, and then you have to like do this weird rough transition into a hard carry, which is kind of bizarre. and doesn't really work super well. So I think this is like along the path of making... I think I would play Brood more this way, personally. Because then you're playing Brood the whole game instead of playing Brood half the game. Or for the first 20 minutes or something. I approve. I'm, I'm interested. Um, Central Warrunner base armor increased by 1. I don't, a lot of armor increases for some some heroes. Um, buff to the Retaliate damage talent. That one's going to be really good for killing towers. Um, I played Centaur the other day. I went Strength because I needed the health in the game I played. But 80 Retaliate damage is like crazy. He does 64, I think. 60-ish with his 4th Retaliate. This is puts you up to 140 damage every time a tower attacks you, which is quite a lot. So, um, yeah. And if anything, Centaur is better against towers now because when they get glyphed, now I guess that doesn't matter because I was going to say it's more he's more likely to be attacked by a tower, therefore retaliate, but they're glyphed, so he wouldn't deal damage. Never mind. Um, Chaos Knight's strength gain reduced by a little bit. 
a uh, little nerf to the hero. Chaos Bolt, minimum damage increased by 30. The maximum damage increased by 30. Okay. So... That means 30 damage increase. If this, if the minimum would be increased by 30... No? Oh god, I gotta think. It's just a... Am, am I wrong? Is this just a damage increase of 30? Yeah, it is. Because it's the other previous was an average. If the minimum only went up by 30, but the maximum did not go up by 30, it would be on, on average 15 damage increase. But this means it's a on average 30 damage increase. So it does 150 to 300 at level 4. And level 1 is now um, 90 to 180, which is a 135 damage nuke at level 1, which is really, really good. Before it was um, 120. The difference is 40 plus 80, 120. So half of that is 60, 120. So it went from 120 to 135. So it's a small it's a small minimum damage increase. I'm, I'm going to stop thinking about this. I'm not sure if I have it right. The minimum stun changed to scale better, 1.25. This is for the best. Uh, thanks for the sub. And the um, maximum stun changed to be a little bit more consistent. I like this. The, these numbers were like old Dota 1 stuff where it was like, oh, he's chaos. Or you can still be chaos without it being like kind of uncontrollable. Like the variable just sucks so bad. Like if you get a level 3 stun, obviously there's a higher chance of getting a stun here, but it's like you could just get a little screwed and get a 1. And now it's uh, more, more likely to be reasonable. Like this is going to definitely justify leveling this ability earlier. You could argue maybe a buff to support Chaos Knight. Um, in terms of stun duration, we're basically looking at a 0.25 increase here. And then, I don't, I don't, wanna, I don't wanna do the math, the numbers aren't super simple. I'm already having trouble with Chaos. Um, Phantasm Scepter now also reduces incoming, thank fucking god. This is the worst eggs. This was actually such a garbage eggs. I played a Chaos Knight game on stream like three days ago, two days ago. And somebody on my team, some elk bought me and gave me an eggs. And I was like, thanks I guess? Because it lowered your cooldown by 35 seconds to 110 seconds. But that was not that good, because your illusions still die so fast. And it's like, okay, well, I lowered my cooldown by 35. And yeah, I could use it on an ally. But it's just it just wasn't very good. Um, but the fact that it reduces the damage that the illusions take, I think this is fantastic. So, oh, keep in mind, guys, um, the illusions can now lifesteal. This is why they nerfed his strength gain. Because illusions can now lifesteal, means Chaos Knight's illusions are going to stay alive longer. It means buying Ags on Chaos Knight is finally becoming a real thing, guys. His illusions will only take 80% extra damage when you buy Ags now, um, rather than taking 160% extra. So it's actually a pretty big damage uh, decrease. Um, it's decreasing the damage bonus they get by half. Yeah, that they take by half. It's having it if you buy Ags could genuinely be a super viable item on Chaos Knight, which I am down for because it was garbage before. So, so crappy. Okay, uh, Chen, Holy Persuasion provides a move bonus movement speed to converted creeps. Okay, that's a buff. Divine Favor is now a passive aura. Okay. Provides 1, 2, 3, 4 HP regen. So maybe why they nerfed... Um, Mech pipe, that kind of thing. We'll see. Provides HP regen passively, heal amplification passively, and 4, 8, 12, 16 bonus damage for heroes. Your creeps get two times damage values. So, it's no longer a spell that you cast. You just have it. You get one HP regen. You've got 8% heal amp passively. So, really, you're getting 1.08 HP regen. And you get four bonus damage. The damage numbers are pretty much fucking garbage. It's not much at all. But your creeps getting double is pretty solid. Basically means if you were like a 0-4-4 build, that'd be pretty solid. It's um, trying to encourage like mass massing Chen again. And now that uh, you can't take catapults, you actually do need to get a lot of creeps to be really valuable. I, I like this. This is how I like to play Chen. Your movements benefiting your uh, creeps here. Like basically it, it's better. They're just encouraging like deathballing the Chen, basically. All this regen will offset what you lost on um, mech. Um, the heal amp is very good. Mech is like the Chen item now, without a doubt. Mech and Greaves. Um, if you heal with Greaves, you're getting an extra 60 health, right? Which is really good. 
helps everybody with like their lifestyle and stuff too. It's just really good. I, I, I like this. It's a uh, less surgical by all means. It's less surgical, more death ball. But like I said, that's how I like to play Chen. So I like this. This is only buffs to my play style. Um, and the level 15 talent change from cooldown to bonus damage. So that's actually not bad. You can do 26 AOE damage instead of 16. Um, and that's actually 20 more damage for your creeps. So we're talking 54 damage for your creeps at level 15. That's really good. In my opinion, that's really good. Like getting to level, I'm. There's no way I don't get experience gain anymore on this hero. It's actually I'm never getting anything but experience gain on this hero. Because that level 15 talent is so good, and then um, it'll get you to things like either GPM at 20 or Holy Persuasion. Minimum. It's not that you level, not that you level that fast on Chen, but hypothetically, if you ever get to level 25, the plus five Holy Persuasion max units. That, that talent's actually really good because you can start taking over like the small hell bears that give your whole team 10% magic resistance. You can stack those babies. Get like four of those. Your whole team has insane magic resistance. I just want to play Chen now. Um, that's exciting. Uh, Death Ball Chen, it's back, guys. Uh, Clinks now has... That's assuming you can stay alive, I guess. Eh, it's it's fine. Uh, Clinks now has... Um, oh, uh, one before I move on, one thing to really point out that's really relevant is that Chen level 1 is going to be way worse now. Because before you could get Divine Favor level 1 and abuse um, it not It obviously got nerfed a lot, but you could increase your regen, your damage. Um, you would get passive regen and you could kill, you could trade heads with the people. But there's no damn way that I'm getting Divine Favor level 1 right now. I mean, you're getting 8% heal amp, so you're getting like 8 extra regen from a whole tango, but it's not worth getting this level 1. I would argue you would probably have to get your first skill. Uh, which is um, increases your attack speed by 30. So you probably get that skill level 1 now with Holy Persuasion 2. Or you just tank it and say like, fuck it, I'm getting Holy Persuasion level 1, I'm just going to right-click heroes until that. and then I'm... But that's not very great either because you, you can't take a really, really strong creep anymore. I think you'd probably get your first skill. Maybe you get Divine Favor level 1. I just feel so bad. You're getting one regen per second. That's by far the biggest nerf here. Is that he's definitely a lot worse at level one. Passive regen to whole team very good in lane. Not really, because it's only eight percent. You're giving them one HP per second over a minute. That's sixty health. It's very very little, guys. Ring of regens are not even that great in terms of overall regen in lane. It's so small. Like the biggest reason that I would say get divine favor level one is just because like it's gonna get maxed out faster than. Which is okay. It's it just doesn't really scale that great. Like the creep damage, you're, you're increasing your creep damage by eight per level, but um, I I think it's definitely justified. You have to get your first skill. You have to get uh, penitence level one on Chen now, because otherwise you're just going to be so useful and useless until level two. Um, anyways, let's move on. Clinks uh, has base mana regen now. He added a scepter. Creates two skeletons near Clinks when exiting Windwalk. Increases Windwalk speed by thirty percent and unlocks max movement speed. Okay, so the skeletons would be like your ultimate, of course. When exiting Windwalk, I think that's cool. Oh, exiting, excuse me. Oh, okay. I thought it was entering, not exiting. Exiting means like when you are when you do something after your Windwalk ends. It could be your Windwalk runs out and you get, like, just times out. You'll get two skeletons. Keep in mind these only attack heroes. Uh, they don't attack creeps. They don't attack towers, I don't think, or Rush. But... This is potentially really good. You could very easily justify, in my opinion, going Medallion into Ags, I feel like. Because you're going to increase your... You already do a lot of damage just naturally because of Syrian Arrows levels. So... Okay, they, they nerfed the Burning Army units damage. I'm guessing that this will tie. So they do a little bit less damage at, at the first level. But they're the same by the time you hit level 12, and they're better when you hit 18. The BAT went up a little bit. But it definitely, yeah, they had to nerf this talent. This sound like the, the first thing I thought was all the things they're dealing with here. They make them slightly worse. They're making the 15 talent worse, because the arrows were like, what, 60 damage at level 4? Then you get another 30, they do 90 damage. Like, buying rushing axe was seriously viable there. Thanks for the sub. Um, so this is, this is, I think this is cool though, uh, with medallion or solar crest, you could definitely get kills on people. And it also means that you don't have to worry about an orchid or a BKB or something like that as much because what's going to happen is there's going to be you and skeletons attacking the target 
And yes, they can stun you, but they can't necessarily also stun the skeletons. I don't think they're targetable for spells. I think you just have to attack them twice. So I, I like this. I think this is a nice change. Um, it's also not going to make him that raw. Like it's like he's not going to do that much more damage, but it will allow you to gank decently, which I think is cool. And skeleton walks on a really long cooldown anyways. It's 17 seconds, but it also increases your wind walk speed. Goes 11, 22, 33, 44. So it'd be up to 70%, which is a lot. It's almost doubled and unlocks max movement speed. So yeah, you're going to be able to run around and be brood like, I dare say. I think this is a nice change to the hero. It's going to shift him more towards that ganking playstyle. But yeah, just go like treads, wraith bands, maybe a soul ring, and then get uh, medallion eggs, perhaps. Could be good. Um, clockwork base armor increase, clock definitely need a buff. A lot of strength heroes, a lot of offlane strength heroes getting into these armor buffs. Um, CM attack point improves. This means it's, you can, not only do you attack faster because they increased your base attack time, base attack speed, but um, you don't have to spend as much time animating your animation anymore. You can cancel your attack earlier. So that means it's going to be easier to chase. It might be a really nice benefit to the hero. We'll see. This is actually a pretty big buff, I would argue. She's going to be much better at fighting level 1. Um, Dark Seer Strength reduced by 3. That is 60 health. It's pretty big. Um, they removed the AoE Surge. No, they didn't. They put it to 25. AoE Surge instead of Iron Shell Damage moved Iron Shell Damage down to 20. Made it 100, which is still pretty damn good. Um, and then removed the cooldown reduction made it 10 armor. Um, nobody ever really got the cooldown reduction because they would get the AoE Surge. Um, I think adding 10 armor there is fine. Defense, defense, offense. Make them choose, I guess. Which is actually what all of them are. Did they mess them up here? They did, arguably. The right column is all defense until the top line. Left column is all damage. Uh, you could argue AoE Surge is also damage, but Parallel Wall is definitely damage. AoE Surge, you would argue, is more defense. Val fucks up again, man. We'll allow that one. Um, but yeah, 10 armor. That's fine. I think it's uh, nice to have. You could become really, really tanky as Darkseer against physical damage. Like Shiva's and um, Lotus Orb and stuff. Um, AoE Surge is definitely really, really good. I'm glad they put it at 25. The Talon, the Talon is way too good. Added Scepter Upgrade Attacking no longer takes you out of Shadow Realm. Each attack still has bonus damage based on the direction of the buff. That's really good, actually. Especially once you hit 25. That's going to be really cool, actually. That's a really cool axe. Really, really cool axe. Makes right-clicking more viable as a, as a Dark Willow. Because, like, you're going to attack... You already... Uh, Dark Willow has a really low BAT, so she attacks very rapidly. Um, so you're going to see definitely some cases. Like, Veil is... Potentially, I feel like this could be a really, really, really good talent. Or Ags. If you have enough attack, if you have a lot of attack speed, this talent's really good. Because you could just be throwing tons of damage. I mean, it does like, how much damage? Did they reduce the, yeah. They, they removed the 20 talent, which needed to happen. It was like the plus 300 Shadow Run max damage. If that was still there, you would do way too much damage with this. At max, it's doing, what, 360 right now? So you're probably not going to get more than a couple attacks out of this, which might only end up being a couple hundred points of damage. It might be kind of equivalent to this one, but um, it does make your make you more survivable for longer, which I think is kind of cool as well. Uh, they buffed the GPM talent at 15 also. And um, yeah, replace that with a Bramble Maze cooldown talent, um, which is 25 minus 12. So down to 13 second cooldown on Bramble Maze, which is pretty good. I like that one. Um, as a support, you'd pretty much always get that one, in my opinion. They would always get that left talent and get the uh, Shadow Realm damage increase, but now that that's gone, I think Bramble Maze being on a lower cooldown is definitely more beneficial. It's going to make it uh, very spammable. Spell Life Deal is more of like a core thing. Cool. I think this is a nice change to the hero. Dark Willow, where are we at? Uh, Dazzle, Shadow Grave, Scepter Radius increased by a little bit. A little buff to Dazzle, almost nothing. Um, yeah, I'm just not going to allow those ones through. 
Added Scepter for Death Prophet. Anytime an enemy is affected by your spells, carry and swarm impact, silence debuff, spirit siphon target, or when you attack an enemy, a ghost will fly out and hit the enemy for double the usual damage, then return to you with life. These ghosts apply 100% slow for 0.3 seconds. Crypt Swarm, Cast Point, Reduce. I mean, I've always been looking at a scepter and I've been like, man, Death Prophet needs an eggs uh, upgrade because like she's a so ulti based and it gives her raw HP, which is perfect because she's a I need to survive kind of hero while my skills kill people. But this looks this, this looks very cool, honestly. It's um, I assume that when it says returned you with life, this means you will get as much health as it did to them. And ghosts do 58 damage physical. So, I would argue something like AC Ags could be good. But everything, Carrying Swarm, Impact, this. So you're basically adding, you're adding that damage to anything you do. When you throw a Crypt Crip Swarm, it's increasing your Crypt Swarm damage by 106 physical. That also slows. I don't know how long it takes for the ghost to hit. If you silence people, you're doing damage. If you spirit siphon them, you're dealing damage. And when you attack them, you're dealing damage. But not your ultimate. Your ultimate doesn't benefit this. But it's cool. I like it. So it's a way to increase your survivability, raw, and uh, lifesteal in combat, and apply more utility. So it's going to make her less reliant on potentially Atos, Yules, that kind of stuff. She could just go Ags, maybe. This, this one I want to try. Let's demo this out. I haven't been demoing very much because I don't want this to go on forever. But I definitely want to see what this feels like. Let's level up like a moderate amount, but not like... Okay, that was quite a bit, but... Um, I like magic resistance for the most part. Cast range is probably what we're looking for in this case. And though I don't know. Let's just get like some boots and... Uh, I don't know. Let's just buy a couple items. Okay, so. Um, let's give them hearts. Okay. So it takes a little time. Guys having trouble? They can't turn that fast. That's pretty funny. And then obviously this doesn't do anything extra. It's all normal stuff, but... I mean, um, it's only gonna add damage, right? It's definitely gonna make uh, Octarine better too. The Crypt Storm cooldown is actually better too. That's, a, that's another cool thing. Getting this is better. Oops, I didn't realize they were dying. I suppose that happens, huh? I actually like playing, like, Bloodstone. It's not good, but... I mean, if I can do this more often... Assume this will work, too. Yeah. And, like, silence to get last hits. I don't know, I think that's awesome. I think this is really cool. Upgrades, Exorcism. I'm a big fan. I'll definitely try this. Um, like I said, I liked going... This is like an old build and it's not very viable and it's worse now because they nerfed uh, how Bloodstone worked, but I really like doing something like Bloodstone and now it's more justified because it it gives you more mana to cast Crypt Swarm like all the time basically and now it's more justified too with Ags potentially because you can you're st still getting damage even if it's only like a little bit more and now for the memes That's cool. That's very cool. Works on attack. Could could justify maybe there's some like crazy damage mask manus build or something fucking crazy. Like mask manus eggs death profit guys is that the move? Oh the heal I forgot about the heal part yeah. 
Um, I don't. I don't know if it hits towers. Sorry. I, I'm gonna move on. I would guess yes. I would guess yes, but n no promises. Uh, disruptor. It does hit towers. Okay. With Octarine, it would lower your cooldown. You would get benef. You would get bonus heal, and uh, lowering cooldown obviously means more, more damage dealt. Um, level 15 talent increase from kinetic field to minus four, which would put you at a six second cooldown, which is fine. Disrupt. Okay. Devour now has a creep limit level level limit. Okay. Very needed. Doom is pretty darn good. Um, so this means that level three means you can eat lane creeps. Uh, if you go into neutrals, you're getting like medium abilities. You're not getting Hellbear Smasher. You would need level four. You need level three Devour to get a Hellbear Smasher, I believe. Yeah, you would need level three Devour to get a Hellbear Smasher, the red guy. Um, you could eat his smaller, the yellow one, with level two Devour. Um, the level one Devour, you could still get things like the Poison Attack, Ghost Slow, um, Chain Lightning. There's some abilities you're getting, but they're not great ones. It's not like you're gonna hit level one and have a really good ability like before. Uh, they buffed the, this talent as well. This uh, I was a little disappointed when they changed cleave to be, when they changed physical cleave to be affected by armor level because um, I had this build that wasn't viable, but I liked it. Where I'd devour the um, Thunderhide creep, get a bunch of attack speed with it because you could bonus yourself like at an aura already, and then you could also give yourself an extra fifty or seventy-five. It would give you, and then you could get the cleave talent and do like tons of cleave damage. But now one seventy-five is like it's definitely a lot. Um, I don't think it's viable still, but it's going to make it more viable. I don't think this talent is quite gone yet, personally. I think it could could become could become something, potentially. All right, Ag's upgrade for Dragonite. People have always theory theory crafted this one, but they've always had generally bad ideas. Let's see what it is. Oh, fourth level, a black dragon. All right, this is a uh, this is the uh, what we get from Game of Thrones, I guess. Gaining scepter, increase the level of your ultimate by one. We got that. Okay. Oh, but it means if you get Ag's before you're um, level 18, then you would become like the level three dragon, potentially. You buy eggs as soon as you hit six and have the level two dragon. That's potentially viable. Cause you could actually do some kind of like rush eggs, kill stacked camps, maybe thing. Like it's like old school Dragonite maybe, or just get to level 12 by eggs. And all of a sudden you've got the frost dragon, which is potentially really good. It doesn't say how much the, let's, let's finish reading first. Black Dragon has 50% more corrosive damage, so that would be 30 damage per second. Splash damage and slow amount. Okay, so extra slow damage. Okay. Late game Dragon, that would be really good slow wise. It also increases your attack range by 2600. We gotta fucking test this. So, um. So normally we would turn into a green dragon. Here's our axe. Hey, I'm a red dragon. Doesn't yet say what it does. Oops. Pull up again. Hey, I'm a blue dragon at level 12. How much slow does it do though? Uh. It's probably the same as Scotty, it looks like. It shouldn't be 20 per second, it should be... Why is it only 20? Isn't it more than that? Oh, that's only the black one. The black one has a bonus. Okay. I am a black dragon. Even bigger. Sixty? It was not sixty a second ago. Is this right? Holy shit, dude! Look at that slow. He's taking thirty damage per second correctly, but he slowed by way more. Wasn't this just twenty? Am I crazy, guys? Okay, it was okay. I just must have misread. I'm seeing the twenty here. So forty percent slow. It's better than Scotty now. 
without a doubt. It used to be about the same, but now it's better than Scotty. Thank you for the sub. It, uh... So 40% slow once you get the Frost Dragon, which is really good. Um, so you could argue Dragonite's like a better counter against Lifestealer than Scotty is at the moment. You can't just like buy an item that makes you as good against Lifestealer as a Dragonite would. Um, and you get 60%, which is a huge amount, once you hit level 18. Which is like a bonkers amount. Um, it also increases your attack range to 600. Oh, I gotta go back and check that shit. Does that mean that with Ags, without your ultimate, your attack range is 600? Surely it doesn't, right? Like, surely I'm not. I'm <laughs> like, is it gonna attack? So you're still melee. I'm very confused. It's plus 100 range from the regular dragon. Increases, it also increases your attack range to 600. Okay, let's try the black one. I assume that's what it's referring to, I guess. Okay. So we should see the difference now. 30% and then... Okay, yep. So we have... It's basically an extra a little bit. It's a little bit more attack range. And more magic resistance. Which is kind of a nice change. So now you get magic resistance and armor from this hero. So arguably, if they have a lot of magic damage and it's super late game, it's better to buy an Ags than it is to buy other things. Um, but I, what was the base? It was like, I was hitting for like 450 range or something, not 600. So it's a little bit more range and it gives you a hood level of magic resistance, which is a lot actually certain games okay moving on uh draw ranger draw ranger uh marksmanship no longer instantly kills ancients thank god still does damage and pierces marksmanship now only pierces base armor and not total armor that is a very good change um so what this means is draw ranger is now like elder titan she is a counter to heroes that have a lot of agility items she is not a counter to heroes that buy raw armor items Um, it not one-shotting Ancients is also a really big nerf because you could basically hit 600 out, go hit Ancients, and level up really quickly and get a lot of gold. Um, you're still going to be able to kill them, but you're not going to be able to get these like free levels. So it won't be if you punish her in lane, she isn't going to be able to instantly recover like before, which was really obnoxious. You basically have to like dumpster her in lane, and then where she goes to farm, then you have to dumpster her there too. It was really difficult to do both, generally, because the other the second chunk takes a lot of execution. So if she just sits there and gets levels, all of a sudden all of her other allies who you who haven't been dumpstered by you now attack really fast and it's still a really hard game. I think this is definitely needed, and I think the second nerf was is very nice. So again, it's marksmanship is gonna be very good against agility carries that buy a lot of uh armor items, like Morphling, for example. But um not gonna be very good against strength heroes that buy a lot of raw buy arm anybody that buys raw armor items that doesn't buy agility based items. She's not gonna be as good at killing them. I look forward to seeing her win rate tank. Um, Elder Titan Scepter upgrade reworked. Uh, his Ags was really garbage. It would disarm you if it hit. It was just bad. Echo Stomp now causes you to become spell immune while channeling, and for two additional seconds per affected enemy hero. Okay, so what this means to me is that when you start casting your second skill, or I'm sorry, your first skill, Echo Stomp, you become magic immune while channeling it. And depending on how many heroes that you stomp with it, you get two extra seconds per hero. So basically, if you buy Ags, you have a free BKB on your hero. Kind of. Not free, but you get a couple seconds, which is cool. Because that's one of the problems with the hero is that like, okay, you can get damage from heroes sometimes, and then you run in and you go fight. But there but you also then need a BKB and you need movement speed. It's just you need so many things to like become a right click god on this guy. I'm sure Fogged is really happy because I know he's a huge fan of Elder Titan. And uh, not, not, necessarily, not necessarily saying that people are going to go out and buy Ags on Elder Titan. If I could learn my alphabet. Um, but I think this is a nice option that could make you justify 
um, buying ags instead of BKB. Oh, I'm sorry, buying ags instead of, yeah, yeah, that was right, buying ags instead of BKB. Because with BKB, you can be you can do your right click stuff, but now it's like if you buy ags, every time you go for a stomp, they're not going to be able to interrupt you. They can dodge it, they can become magic immune themselves, but from a support position, this sounds fun. It's not offensively ridiculous, but it definitely makes like, it gives you the ability to defend yourself. Also, what's uh, something that's really cool is you can just use this as like a delay, as like a dodge thing kind of thing. Like if if my opponent's running at me and I know they're about to, let's say they throw like a magic missile at me or something, I can just cast Echo Stomp. If they hit me with Slight of Chains, Searing uh, Slight of Chains with uh, Searing Fist or whatever, I can just cast Echo Stomp, become spell immune, and remove those. I can probably dispel things, I would guess. Um... So I think there's gonna be a lot of cases where a support elder time could easily justify buying eggs. Because the echo stomp cooldown is what, eight seconds or something? Oh, it's 11, it's actually pretty long. But there's gonna be more circumstances for using echo stomp, basically. If you catch five enemy heroes, you're talking 10 seconds, you got a free BKB once it ends. So 1.7 seconds of immunity, I think is cool. Um, you can still be orchided before you use it, but it's gonna be like a rage now. I think that is a really cool change to the hero that's gonna make it a selectively good item to purchase. Um, we'll, with time, we'll see how obnoxious it is against certain heroes, but uh, I think it's cool. Added Scepter Upgrade Ember, Fire Remnant cast range is three times longer, and initial remnant movement speed is two times faster. Um, I would say the raw stats that Ags give are good for Ember Spirit. Maximum number of charges increased from three to five, and the activate Fire Remnant costs no mana. Okay, very cool. So activating Fire Remnant is, what, 150 mana right now? If you have five charges, we're talking five times 300, so you could do up to 1,500 damage with all of your charges, which is a lot. Um, the cast range being longer is nice. I imagine it's gonna be, oh, we, we gotta see what this looks like. It's gonna be really fast. But you could probably use this to hop around in team fights even more ridiculously. Oh, fuck it, let's just level up. Like, it's way faster than your jump is. Your jump is actually slow now. Like, without the, with this, you don't even really need that much movement speed. Like, that, that was me without boots, for God's sake. Like, what if I actually... What if I get actually fast? Oops. Watch out, guys. Is that you share, uh, uh, scare the shit out of people. What's the cast range now? It's infinite. <laughs> Hold up. See how far that is? Do I need to... Ah, I almost died. I knew that I needed to slide a fist to projectile dodge because you can't projectile dodge with this fire remnant, but there were no creeps to hit. Okay, so yeah, that's uh, that's a huge range. Wait, why was that one so fast? But it looks quite fun, I must say. No mana? That's cool. This is by far the biggest mana cost, generally. Cause you're casting like flame guarded stuff. I could definitely see people buying this, possibly rushing it. Like minimum, it's like a 200 damage. If you buy it base, it's a 200 damage increase. Cause you're getting two extra charges. And once you get 12, it's like 400 extra damage. Maybe Veil, Ember, Veil Ags, Ember. Is that a thing? People would have to go back to like flame guard stuff. And Slight of Fist is much better right now. Maybe not viable, but um, I could definitely see people squeezing an Ags in. It looks really good though for four thousand gold. It's not bad. Can I test the damage you can do? It's we can do the math easy. Yeah, every fire remnant does uh, up to three hundred damage multiplied by five times five. That's fifteen hundred magic damage, not counting spell amp, of which you do get some at level twenty. So it's potentially really good. Definitely potentially very good. Um, I could definitely see players buying this. It's going to make it easier to split push if you can cast it from far distances. If the the speed is fast, it's going to be hard to get caught. Because if it's two times faster, that means if you get slowed by a lot, it's still going to be quick. 
not that that's usually like what's keeping embers alive, but um, it's definitely going to make it easier to move around really, really rapidly and not have to worry about mana. Um, if you decide to spend the gold. Uh, strength gain bonus for void. Level 10 talent buffed a little bit. Level 15 talent buffed a little bit. This would be a four and a half second time walk cooldown now. And then 20 talent is a little bit more text. Just tiny little buffs to void. Grimstroke Scepter grants you a new ability, Dark Portrait. Creates an ink illusion of a target enemy hero. The illusion lasts 20 seconds and is magic immune with 30% movement speed. It lasts 20 seconds and is magic immune with 30% extra movement speed. It takes 200% incoming damage and deals 150% outgoing damage. So it does more damage. Um, ink swell you can put on it. So basically you, you use it to make a illusion of your enemy and put ink swell on them. It basically makes ink swell a lot easier to use. Part of the problem with ink swell... This is actually a big buff right here. Um, I, I encountered this when I tried to play Grimstroke the other night. I kept trying to cast ink swell on BKB allies and I couldn't. It was really annoying. Made ink swell a lot less valuable. Like It's going to make... Um, works with ult. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's a good point. So you could use your ulti to link them two and then cast the dark portrait you would get two illusions it's gonna be really good against um like pls basically um or terra blades potentially it takes double damage but it deals 50 percent extra cooldown is 35 mana cost the mana cost is really high 200 is a lot but having extra movement speed is really good too like it's literally going to do more damage than terrible himself does it's gonna be really good against morphling this is a uh, pretty solid. This is pretty damn solid. And then using it on enemy heroes, especially like melee ones, the fact that it has movement speed bonus is just a huge buff to, to Ink Swall. So if you create an illusion, instantly cast Ink Swall on them, um, and then uh, you know keep it in the enemy fight, and boom, extra damage. It's cool. Um, gyrocopter. This is the only buff he got. Attack speed. The, the reason they didn't touch Gyrocopter other than this attack speed bonus is because I got put into Captain's mode. They don't want to destroy the pro scene right now. We'll see what happens though. I, I wish that there was a, a reality where Gyrocopter could exist without IO. That way he could be a little bit buffed. Because I really like the hero. Just you want me to test it? Um Alright, we, we can do it really quick. It's uh it's really straightforward though. Let's just give it to us. Yeah, it does. Enemy hero. are really fast. With dripping brush. Four thirty one. Yeah, they do a lot of damage. These are only supposed to do a hundred. Like what the color on them is cool too. Really straightforward. I think it is uh, definitely going to be a situational thing that you can buy. Grimstroke usually does have a lot of gold. It's also going to give you a way to help close games out. That's one of the problems with Grimstroke because it's hard to just end games sometimes unless you get like a hex or something. So um, having that as an option against certain illusion heroes will definitely be nice. Or basically just some carries. It'll be very nice. Like against Morphlings and stuff. It could be really, really valuable. Um, Oscar base armor increased by one. Berserker's blood regen increased by 5% at all levels. Inner fire cooldown massively reduced. Basically he's going to be much more effective uh, level. Maybe not much more, but more effective pre-8. Invoker base damage increased by 3. Oops, come on. Xor attack damage per instance reduced by 1 at all levels. So basically at level 1 he does the exact same damage. But it's this is a buff to Quaswex basically. So if you don't go Exhort you have three more damage than you did before. If you do go exhort, you have the same damage. So just a buff, buff to Quaswex. Um, and it is, yeah, it's the same at all levels, right? Because it's only one less. So if you have three exhort orbs, you're going to have the same damage no matter what. So this is just a raw buff to the hero if you're Quaswex. If you go exhort, it's literally the same. Level 10 talent, chaos meter damage buffed. And alacrity speed 20 talent. 
buffed as well because everybody always gets Cataclysm because Cataclysm's so good. But 45 Alacrity damage speed is kind of bonkers as well, though. There, you could definitely do some strats with that, but um, yeah, just buffing um, buffing non exhort builds basically, except for chaos meteor damage, obviously. IO added to captain's mode. Separate upgrade. Spirits now passively spawn around you constantly every second. Max of five five spirits. So they okay. They didn't they didn't remove his set. They didn't change his scepter. Io gives scepter bonuses to other heroes. He also can get his own scepter bonus now. Spirits passively spawn around you constantly every second. We gotta look at that. Tether pull can now be interrupted if stunned during it. Like timber change. Uh that's that's really good. Really necessary change. He can't uh, escape as fast. Let's see what this looks like. I think this is cool. Um, let's see how fast it runs out. I mean, I mean, this is not bad, honestly. You can just farm with this. You can like actually just rush eggs and run around fighting. That sounds fun. You don't have to necessarily go as heal focused. Heal focus is really good, but and then there's a a, a spirit talent at 15. That's really good. When people see out coming from Alloway, depends on what the the distance is. You can make it shorter. the The problem though is that like it's probably it's gonna be good for farming. Like you could hit creeps a lot faster, and you're gonna be able to deal more damage. Wait a second. I'm not. I don't. I don't necessarily think Io Mid is gonna work, but this does this. Oh, it's just always a passive then. So basically, you never need to cast mana. I was like, wait, do I, can I also resummon them when I want? I mean, they're just always going. So you basically need less mana regen. The only mana you will ever spend at this point is casting overcharge once in a while, relocate, and occasional tethers. So it basically removes removes any need for mana regen, arguably. I mean, you still probably want to buy like a wand or something like that. Oh, we got a tip. Thank you. Stomp animation before the stomp starts. Uh, sorry, I'm going to have to check. I'm, I should have been looking over quicker. Oh god. One second. Uh, um, the stomp animation before the stomp starts gives magic community. This will allow all the time to do so. I mean, for a short period for free. Yep. Well, it's not for free. It costs you 4,000 gold. But. Oh, you can use it without putting on cooldown. I see. Uh, let's let's look at that quick. Well, is it going to give you the full duration? I, I assume they'll remove that. So I see what you mean, because there there are ways to like you can like cancel the animation before it goes through, before you start channeling it. Like, yeah, you can become. That's definitely really annoying. I guarantee we're gonna get scripters with this who are gonna like script to perfectly do it. They have to stop moving when they do it, but. But then once you once you get to it, then it uh check if it dispels. Yeah, okay. It does not actually. It doesn't dispel. Just makes you immune during it. Okay, so. Dispellable, strong dispels only. Yes. 
Does that mean... Are there any enemy spell dispels that are strong dispels? I'm not sure. It doesn't dodge stuns. I mean... Would be a good... Yeah, it does. Why is it not on cooldown after canceling? Because I'm not can I'm not casting the animation. You know like how there's an animation right here? This is an animation. I'm not attacking yet. Therefore my attack can't go on cooldown. And it's the same for this. I'm not casting it. I haven't begun the cast yet, the animation. I'm can I'm interrupting it, and that's why it's making me immune. So it just kinda like it's like a light switch. But if I cast too long, then it'll start casting. And see, as soon as the channeling starts, it puts it on cooldown. So once it starts, it starts. Why was that so much? Isn't it just supposed to be like two seconds? Two, three, four, five, six, what the fuck, seven, eight, eight seconds? Did I misread this? That was eight seconds for two heroes, what the heck? Let's go back briefly and take a look at that. that. That was definitely interesting. Thanks for the heads up on that. Elder Titan. I don't know. It must have doubled it or something. I'm not sure. Two for you, two for spirit. Oh. Is that real? Anyways, um, a, you could probably dodge the magic missile, I imagine, if it was still during the wind-up time, I'm guessing. Uh, I guess we can check that. That's probably the last thing to check. It's going to be hard to do, though, but I can try. First try, bitch. Get out of here. Another nerf to Ventral Spirit, unfortunately. Uh, where were we at? That was Elder Titan. Okay. Um, I mean, there's not that many projectile based ones, but there's definitely stuff like Bloodseeker Silence, for example. Bloodseeker Ground Silence. You could dodge that. Um, there's actually a lot of stuff that you could fucking dodge. <laughs> Think about it. Things that are wave based at all that hit within like a small matter of time. It's, I don't know. They should probably make it so that the immunity only comes once you start channeling it because that just feels. There's probably a lot of things where that might be really obnoxious to play against. Or like if you're trying to orchid him and you're just casting it all the time while he stands still. So when you click on him, it's going to be like, oh, you can't click on him. You know, that might be really obnoxious. Can you dispel roots? Uh, no, we saw that it doesn't dispel. It doesn't dispel you because I put battle hunger on myself with an X and then I couldn't remove it, even casting the whole thing. So it doesn't. it's not good for dispelling, but it's good for point dodging stuff. Sniper ulti basically useless, yeah, that's another, that's a good example. Alright, um, where are we at? Invoker, IO, okay, liquid fire ability effect still impacts the area when the target dies or the attack is evaded. Okay, that's a nice little change, um, it's not a big deal, but it's going to really help you for hitting towers, tier 3s, for example. Um, it'll be good against um, PAs, other evasive heroes. You could argue it's good against stuff like Arc Ward. Potentially, it's good. It actually makes the attack range talent for Jakira at ten a lot better. I could maybe see some pro players beginning to get that now. Maybe. Um, Cube of Light Scepter now also causes Illuminate to not require channeling. Thank God, that was like the biggest nerf to the hero, and they finally can put it back in because they nerfed his other stuff enough. 
a little bit. So now you can run around and do your stuff. Still provides heal bonus. Um, Chakra Magic can now be cast on enemies. Place an a debuff that drains. It's literally Mana Leak. Wait. Oh, current. Okay, they're making it clear. Um, so you can you can Mana Leak them now with uh, Chakra Magic. But it uh, drains current mana, not max. So you could drain mana really, really fast. This is actually very similar to Old Coddle, but they just gave him an extra ulti. Which is kind of cool. Um, you, I would argue that the Chakra Magic talent is kind of bad, potentially, if you use it on enemies. But this gives you a, a decent option against heroes that... If they, if they have like full mana, it's really good. Especially like cast range talent. What is that at? Yeah, it's level 15. You get the level 15 cast range talent and just drain mana really quick. Um, what's blinding light distance? 600 or something? No, it's not that much, is it? It doesn't say. It says the cast range doesn't say, oh, it says the radius is 600. Does that mean you can drain like 30% of somebody's mana probably with level 4 chakra? It's like really usable. Even like the level 1. It's not that much, I guess. 4% times however many units they move. If they move... If they move a thousand units, they lose forty percent of the mana. It's pretty mild. It's pretty mild, and it's and again, it's current mana, so it's actually going to go down as their mana drains. You can't, you can't lose all of your mana with this. It's gonna, it's gonna become worse. But it's it's a very mild mana leak. But it is a mana leak. So this is a, I think it's a nice addition. Gives you more options as the hero. But yeah, it's not going to be a lot of mana. Because as time as, as your mana gets drained, you're, it's going to become less effective. After 10% of mana loss, for example, it becomes 10% less good. It will drain 10% less. So, But still, uh, the Scepter change is nice. Gives you uh, something to build towards if you're playing support. Um, Legion Command, man, all these low armor offlaners getting armor increase. Legion getting one more. Lich base mana regen. Lena strength gain increase slightly. Turn rate improves slightly. Lion finger of death damage per kill reduced. I think this is probably needed actually. It's been a long time since we saw a lion nerf, but this will make the hero worse. This is this is one of the best ability draft abilities, just because it kind of turns any hero into a hard carry late game if you buy eggs. Um, but I think this is kind of fine by all means. It was a little bit too easy to like blow people up super late game. Forty damage is still. It's gonna make the math a lot harder. But um, if you do math. Most people don't, uh, but I think this is uh, I think this is fine. The hero's still like viable, in some ways, um, and it's not like the ultimate's that much worse. It's just going to be a little bit less extreme in some of those crazy games. Lone Druid strength gain increased, true form health bonus increased, so even tank your own Lone Druid now. Just generic buffs to him. It's not that much health gain, but uh, Luna base damage increased by four. That probably needed to happen. Although a little scared about the IO combo. Uh, but her aura is, her base damage is really shitty right now. Or it was at least. 42 to 48 is so bad. It's like what? 45 damage or something like that? Your aura gives you 6. So you're sitting at like low 50s. But that's buffed by 4. It was even worse than that previously. Yeah, I knew that was going to jump me. Where are we at? Luna, Luna, Luna. Uh, Lycan Scepter Upgrade causes one of the three creep waves to include two wolves. You cannot control the wolves, but they are considered your units. These wolves have the same movement speed as land creeps. That is very cool. Very interesting. This kind of reminds me of like old Dota mods where some, some of them, and they weren't necessarily Dota, they were games like Dota, you could actually upgrade your creep waves to make them push harder. It's kind of cool. One of the three creep waves to include two wolves. So the wolves probably become invisible. I assume they're probably the same as your regular wolves. So some of them will be invis and they'll have the main thing. So it's a, a way to push. I don't know if people are going to buy this. I, I'm i unsure if they're going to buy it in pro games. I don't remember. And now I'm curious how much the wolves gold, how much gold they give. But they're going to give you gold too because you're going to kill creep waves. So it's going to be like the easiest way to farm now. Just buy eggs on Lycan. It's bad. It's so bad, terrible. It's really bad. I mean, yeah, yeah, it's probably bad. 
It's just two wolves. I mean, in, in games with, like, players who are really bad at slow pushing, I think this is okay. Like, I genuinely think this I, this upgrade would be, this item would be potentially okay against um, against weak players. But if you're going death ball already, I could see it being kind of okay. Because some of the times you're pushing, I mean, it's, it is only one, it's only two wolves per spawn. So, like, every 30 seconds you get one somewhere. And it will increase their gold gain. But they're also invis and they also have magic immunity. I could see like some situations where like they're actually hard to deal, they're annoying to deal with. I mean it's not worth it's not worth testing it. Like all, all I need to do is check to see like what is the stats of the wolves are. But I'm pretty sure they still have magic resistance. Lycan. Uh looking on a website. There he is, Lycan. Wolves need to armor. Um, summon wolves. Give me them wolf stats. I'm here for wolf facts, guys. Okay. So level four lichen wolves have 450 health. They have 750. Or they have oh, excuse me, 70 percent magic resistance. So it's really fucking hard for anybody that nukes to kill the wolves. But they had they do have zero armor. They have pretty crappy health regen. They deal a decent amount of attack damage. Their BAT is 0.9 seconds. Um, they're definitely going to push pretty hard, but their bounty is 41 gold, so it's like an extra melee creep each. It's kind of like buying a lane super heaps, pretty much, yeah. It's not going to push a lot faster, but it's going to push faster, and your wave is going to have more health. They won't get regen, obviously. They have a 20% chance to cripple, which is a 60 attack speed slow. Like, they're going to push waves, for sure. In games, like if you're split pushing, it's it's certainly it will do something. It won't do nothing. An absolute gain in farm. Of course, it's going to give more farm for the enemy team, but it's not that much more. It's like forty more gold per wave, and that's only one of the three waves. I don't. I could see it not being as bad. They get impulse buff. No, there's no way. Only if you're standing near them. And it also gives you gold from last hits. That's another really good point. Like, it's literally going to get you last hits. It's going to push out lanes safely that you don't have to push. It's like literally... There's, I think you guys are being too critical. I don't think it's great, but I don't think it's... I don't think it's awful. It's definitely not awful. It's probably bad or weak, but it's like it's like using draw aura, kind of. It's going to push... It's it's like one of those things you're not going to see very much, but you might, you'll might you probably feel it. Uh, like, I, I, I'm not saying it's going to be good. I think it's probably going to be a little weak. But I don't think it's god awful, is my guess. Yeah, it is a lot of gold by all means. But you can win games with that shit, you know. You can push lanes, get raxes for free. There's gonna be a lot more map pressure if you're fighting people a lot on the map, and all of a sudden these wolves are somewhere just hitting creeps. It could make a difference. Oh yeah, free eggs from Roche. Good point. If you take Roche three times, you can get the eggs, and then you just get this naturally. Um, all right, let's move on. Uh, level 15 talent, feral, more feral or HP region. Nobody ever gets that one. They always get the cooldown reduction. Uh, Magnus starting strength increased by two. Yo, I, I was playing Magnus the other day. It's so fucking boring. It's really depressing. Shockwave is a super long cooldown. It used to be like 9, 10 seconds or something at all levels. Now it's like 14, and it does 75 damage level one. So I like I maxed Shockwave. It was so bad. It was so, so bad. I like couldn't outlane people like a typical offlaner kind of sometimes does. I, you basically have to play Magnus offlane, and you just have to get in power and max it, and you just have to like buff your carries. It's so boring. Um, Shockwave Scepter max range increased. Shockwave Scepter speed increase. So like the 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 Ags is better, but the hero is still like the same. I don't see him being viable in any other way than than the way he is. It's one of those unfortunate things. He's like he's got this like crazy amp skill. It's kind of like what happened to Drow. Drow had too much damage, gave too much damage to everybody, so they had to change her to attack speed, and then she became awful, and then they fixed her a little bit, and now she became broken. Magnus is like inherently busted because he amplifies other heroes to become busted too, because of Empower. And as a result, his other skill set is like overlooked almost entirely. Like Magnus isn't a fucking hero because Shockwave because Empower exists. Apparently there is a patch to fix something that's broken. Um 
I don't know. It's 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 disappointing. I I, I almost I kind of like Empower is kind of good to be in the game that it's there, but I, I just don't like it. I I wish Magnus could be like his own hero, you know, like he was in the good old days. Um, Mars added a captain's mode based damage reduced by four. I was needed base armor reduced by one. Added scepter. God's rebuke cooldown is now. 1.4 seconds during Arena Blood. Resets God's Rebuke cooldown when Arena Blood is cast. Okay, that was this one. So basically, if you buy Ags, you can just punch people into the walls. Um, before, when you use Arena Blood, if you don't spear somebody to the wall, you do way less damage. Because you're not getting as many Arena Blood procs. Um, but you could basically like spear them to the wall and then God's Rebuke some other guy to the wall to get extra bonus damage. But now if you buy Ags, you can just cast it constantly. So hypothetically, if you go like Deso Vlads or something you could, with Ags, if you're that rich, you could just ulti and then cast this multiple times. What's the duration? Seven seconds. And then if you've used it before you used your ulti, it refreshes it. That way you can go back to using it often. That way you don't like counter yourself by using God's Rebuke, then casting ulti, and then being like, well, there's, there's my Ags wasted. So I think that's a nice solution um arena blood damage rescaled uh i did spot that just now actually um so it's way worse level one which is needed because before you would like arena blood and spear one guy and you would take like way too much magic damage and the cast point increased by a little bit too and level 15 talent is slightly nerfed those are the popular ones so um this is the biggest nerf to the hero by far is this uh, arena blood damage rescale here uh, base armor being reduced by one will matter a little bit. Base damage being reduced a little bit. A little moderate amount. He still does way too much damage. 54 to 62. He's still hitting for like 58 damage at level 1 without any items. He's still good. I think we will see him played. He just won't be able to like get solo kills as easily. Medusa to agility gain nerfed. Mystic's uh, snake mana steal reduced. Is there anything else that like really affect Medusa here? Coddle's Mana Leak is definitely very good against Medusa. It's not like busted, but it's good. Um, Not true. Uh, Meepo base damage increased by 2. His talents look pretty again. So that's the talents that people don't get, I think. Strength talent. Where's that damage talent? Oh, it's a 10 one. Okay, so both of his level 10 talents actually got buffed. And then um, the evasion is more reasonable. 20% is a lot better. Okay. We're on an attack point increased. So she can... This is actually bad. This is a bad, bad for her, actually. She can't attack move as well. I think that's that's a nerf. Am I wrong? But they did, oh, but they did increase her attack speed. What probably means is that her overall attack point is about the same, most likely. Because when your attack speed goes up, your attack point decreases. So they increased it a little bit. That way, she can't like crazy kite. Because she already gets a lot of attack speed from leap. It was probably a little too good. So they probably just like slightly nerfed it. Starstorm scepter upgrade trigger rate improved by one second. It's fine. Monkey King scepter spawns a monkey soldier near you every 3.5 seconds. Soldiers last 12 seconds. Soldiers do not spawn if you're invisible or on trees. Okay. Soldiers can attack any target. However, they will not attack buildings if you are not within 500 range of them. So you can use these to attack buildings, which uh, the regular eggs does not do that. And it's also going to give you a way to abuse the items that you normally buy in a way that won't necessarily just require your ultimate. So it's going to be easier to fight and gank and stuff. Echo Saber is still really good with us. Monkey soldier near you every 3.5 seconds. So you can get like two or three of them at a time. Monkey king eggs is a farming item. We will, let's see. Probably, because if you're standing in a creep wave, you're just going to, you're going to kill it rapidly. I'm guessing I have to be like level six or something. Yeah, it's pretty cool actually. I like it. 
very fun. Makes it seems like uh, movement speed items will be really fun with this. Yeah, it does seem like this will be a farming item. This seems like a genuine thing that you can just rush, potentially. Maybe not rush, because maybe you want like a Maelstrom first or something. And Echo Saber is still really good, obviously, for ganking, but... This does seem quite good. Yo, do your job, what are you doing? This is pretty cool. Seems really fun. Like, uh... You certainly play him as a carry in a different way than you currently have to, which is like phase Echo Saber. And people still do that by all means, but um... You could do some like Pudge stuff too, just like hook somebody into these. By Maelstrom. I'm not necessarily sure that you're gonna want to Go that focus on this, but this is kind of like a nice item that you can just buy. I just I like the like imagine that you have a complicated fight and you're running around. It takes time for it to come out. I, I imagine that you're it's going to be a little bit hard to get it to come out. To be honest, like if I'm chasing a guy and having like a chaotic team fight and somebody's like hiding me or something, I might not get that many attacks in. But I could definitely see it. The farming wise, yes, farming wise is definitely really good. It seems like. Yeah, or items like Radiance are reasonable, because as you're running around a fight, you're doing Radiance Burn over here. And Radiance has been popular in Monkey King lately. Partially for that, you can hide in trees, do Radiance Burn, Creep Waves, you can, um, no matter where you're, uh, like, basically your entire ultimate is going to proc Radiance stuff. The Radiance stuff is definitely good, but so is Maelstrom. But it's definitely a, a very, very cool. I wonder if, like, Disable items or something are viable, too. I think Diffusal Blade could be kind of interesting. Basically everything. Uh, I assume it prioritizes the heroes, but... It's probably irritating, but I, I can't imagine it's really busted. But it's probably good. It's it's another option as a, as a farming item. And realistically, Monkey King doesn't need that many items to be good damage-wise. He just needs levels, so if you buy Ags... But if you buy Ags without actual damage items, that's not good. Maybe I'm over Basher when running away. You can't, your illusion, your your things can't bash. They removed that a long time ago. Their loot, their damage is not reduced like illusions do on towers. They'll fix that, I'm sure. Sounds way too, eh. Eh, maybe it's not that bad. It would definitely help you for pushing towers, though. Uh, don't, I don't think they get vision, I would guess. I guess they don't get, I would guess they don't get vision. I'm not going to go back and check. Uh, adaptive strike damage reduced from 100 to scaling that was needed. Um, added scepter upgrade when, while morphed, you gain 35% cooldown reduction, 50% mana cost reduction, and 600 catch. Okay, I mean, you gotta buy an eggs, or you gotta get a Roche that gives you an eggs, but that is potentially really abusive. The extra monkeys will still spawn in your ulti, yes. You, you'd probably ulti like normal, and it, it's 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 going to look like just the way it did right there. And sometimes they would overstack with the ones that are within an X. But um, yeah, this is uh, 600 cast range. That's a really good point. That's kind of bonkers high. So there's got to be some heroes where that's just stupid. You don't want to turn it into pudges and stuff. Um, I don't know, like Lena's and things. 600 cast range is fucking... Oh, God, that's actually so insane. 600? What? Like to all of your abilities, you like light strike away from six hundred units away. I don't know, man. This seems a little insane. Like the cooldown reduction in the mana cost, but I mean, maybe they have to say like, well, it's got to justify being a scepter. And like thirty five percent cooldown is really good, but it's only base abilities, not ultimates. Mana cost reduction, I think, is fine. Cast your spells, so so you can kind of argue it's like a you're spending four thousand gold to get. Cooldown reduction and cast range. And if you think of this being like a 4,000 gold Aether Lens, it feels better. For sure. So maybe it's justified because of the cost. I, 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 you know, to be honest, I don't really think a Morphling would buy this anyways. They're going to buy regular items. But um, 
at some point late game, yeah, they would definitely they would bother. They would, they would spend the two thousand gold to get the upgrade. Of course, Morphling doesn't buy lens, but that's basically what you're doing. That's what you're doing here. You're only getting cooldown reduction with your ultimate transformation. Uh, Morph no longer dispels your hero. That's really good. It means um, that Morphlings do not have Spirit Vessel solutions or other slow solutions until they get a Manta style or BKB. Probably needed to happen. It's going to make Morphling a lot more vulnerable to Spirit Vessel, though. But genuinely, this is probably not that bad of nerfs here. I guess the Adaptive Strike one's a little bit big because you're not going to be able to trade as well. But this isn't that much of a damage reduction. This is the base damage before, without it adding the agility. It's just going to be a lot less... It's going to be less imposing at level 1, you know? Uh, profit base damage reduced by 2. Nature's Call attack damage reduced by 3 early on, so makes level 1 uh, profit laning even weaker. If you get Stout Shield proc, that's most of the damage alone. Reaper Scythe respawn time reduced late game, so a little bit less effective. Nice Stalker Scepter. Void is now applied in a 900 AoE around you. Increases the Void mini stun duration from 0.1 to 0.6, so it's actually a stun, and reduces cooldown by two seconds. Let's try it. Uh, nice Stalker's in kind of a weird place right now. Um, I like the way the 3-3 plays him. He, like sits in the lane and he does some like, he does like one or two points, maybe he got like two points of void. He did something like this, maybe. By like eight, he would be sitting something like this, and he would go like power treads. Then he would buy like medallion, something like this. And then he'd go solar crest, and then BKB. Um, I just make it nighttime. Let's just make it nighttime. So it reduces the cooldown by two. So it's just like a little bit smaller. It's gonna do that, okay. That's it basically, it's gonna make it better. I won't have to pick my targets as much. Oh, I forgot about the stun part. The stun part will be nice. Don't know if that justifies maxing this out necessarily, as early. Cause getting more points in Crippling Fear is pretty big. Cause you can get the cooldown solo. Um, this is the wrong skill build, this is not what 3-3 three three was doing, he would leave Void at 2. He would max Crippling for a second, because then your uptime becomes really good. 8 out of 15 seconds is much better than 5 out of 30. You'd like almost never use Crippling Fear, right? Oh, it's, okay, it's always AoE actually, even during daytime. That's better. It's not, it's not just night. So that's kind of cool. Uh, is the... Wait, is it... This whole fucking AoE? Is that real? Oh. Okay. That's less garbage. That's big. Uh, I don't know if it'll hit invisible targets. Actually, I don't need to do any of that. We'll see him in a bit, guys. It sounds like it's hitting him. Okay, there's, yeah, he took damage. So it does send invisible heroes. By essentially, mm, wait it out, guys. Um, so that's kind of cool, I, I kind of like this. I mean, obviously it does half damage during daytime. I would love to see like a, a void talent now, void damage talent maybe. Um, is that only stun during night? Oh yeah, it only means stuns during nighttime, right? But that's not too bad. Cooldown is six seconds. You can farm with this. That's the big thing. Push waves. Something that Night Stalker can't do very well. He can auto attack, obviously, but you can't push waves very quick quickly. But now you can, especially at night. Walking up and dealing all that damage. I, uh, I like the addition. I think uh, Night Stalker has some item issues. Like he doesn't have the best things to aim for, and they're definitely against like Death Ball lineups. He feels really garbage sometimes. So I think this is a nice option. It's a way to like spend a little bit of money, a moderate amount of money, but not like an insane amount, and get something that does help you team fight a lot better. Because he's kind of weak at that. I'm uh, I'm a fan. 
Uh, Nick's assassin base strength reduced by one. Vendetta cooldown rescaled. Thanks for the sub. Um, and the 15 talent is a little bit of movement speed nerf. I'm curious why they did that. Um, I thought everybody was going health typically on Nyx. Maybe I'm missing something. I know Nyx is a popular hero right now, by all means. But I'm surprised that they would lower his movement speed talent. Thanks, Staggett. Um, Ogre Magi multicast two times chance increased by 5%. And the level 25 talent is more fire blast damage. Um, this isn't going to make Ogre viable yet. He's still garbage, in my opinion. Um, I don't know. The the movement speed thing still really fucked Ogre really hard. I mean, the multicast from items is cool, but... I don't think you get it from urns, right? But you'd get it from, like, Dagons and stuff like that. Like, hypothetically, you could do, like... I don't know, man. There's like, like Midas is there, but it's like Mimi. And it's not good to rush it because you're supposed to be this like early game hero. Man hits two targets. It's fine. The damage is okay. It's like they basically need to buff his base skills now. Or base uh, increase his base movement speed. You only get 8% movement speed from Bloodlust right now. Look at this. I'm still slow as hell. I'm still so slow. If I buy boots, look how fast I'm 360, it's like nothing. Okay, I get 30 attack speed, but like... It's like you, you, you basically have to like get ignite levels so that you can actually do something in the lane. Because blood dust doesn't really make you that much stronger. And yeah, you're really tanky, you have high armor, and you have good health, but like... What is your transition? Bloodlust? It's like, uh, he just... he And he doesn't have the ability of just being super fucking fast like he used to. Where you could just buy boots and all of a sudden your bloodlust would make you stupid fast. Look at that, I just bought tranquil boots, I'm 368. If I use bloodlust, it's like, I'm barely faster. This is like, I don't know, there's a lot of heroes that are this fast. I'm pretty fast, but... I don't know, maybe this is alright. You, you basically have to get Ignite, I feel like. Oh, I should probably get my ulti, huh? Whoa! Watch out, guys. I could medallion two people in the same fight. I don't know, maybe Urn works. So you can double earn it looks eh, maybe not. Did I hit the same guy twice. Doesn't look like you can multi the earn. I don't know, this hero is like kinda weird. I mean I can do the medallion and all, but Meteor Hammer? I don't think you can meteor hammer multicast, pretty sure. It shouldn't work. It's not really the same, you're not like clicking on a person. It's like a ground targeted ability. I mean, I could use like four staff or something, but. Like, that works. But like, but why? Lotus Orb is nice, yeah, that's a good point. You could like Lotus Orb multiple allies or something. But like, it's, it's just so meme -y. You have to buy like Atos or Orchid or something for this to feel at all good. Dagon, be like, hey, like that's potentially cool and all, but I don't know. He's Ogre's. I'm a big fan of Ogre, but it's not really. He's in a weird place right now. And I'm sure this isn't gonna matter. And this, like, there's basically no changes. Heroes unchanged. Where are we at? Uh, Ogre, uh, Guardian, Angel, Scepter, now also provides 40 HP per second. Okay, so that's back. Oh, that's with eggs though. Which is actually a lot of health. Eh, it's okay. It's fine. Oracle, BAT, super nerfed. Back to a normal hero. Um, 
reduce the movement speed. Equilibrium now passively provides mana steel. Mana steel? Mana steel meaning that when you deal damage, you gain. It's basically life steal, but mana. So it passively gains gains mana now. But when you turn it on, you get uh, you get the mana back. You get more mana. So now you don't have to wait for equilibrium to gain mana. You could probably use your orb more to farm. And when it's activated, it slows. Definitely, I like your comment about saying it's like first pick ability draft. It was already a really good ability draft because there's a lot of ways to like super slow people, like AOE abilities that affect a lot of people. You could slow people by 42% um, while gaining mana, but now it also passively gains mana. So I don't know, it'll probably make OD a little bit more playable, uh, a little bit less difficult to play. Like bad players will be better at playing OD now is probably the nice thing about it. Um, also, it won't make you useless if you're out of mana and not on cooldown, which is kind of nice. Uh, Pangolier, separate upgrade, shield crash now casts a two attack swashbuckle every 90 degrees around your hero. Okay, I think I understand what this is going to look like. Lucky Shot no longer has a chance to silence, now always disarms. And it now reduces armor. So it's kind of like closer to what it was originally. Only disarms, which is pretty fair. Um, same chance, but when it procs, it lowers armor. And you can reapply the disarm. Right? It should be able to reapply. Let's take a look. So arguably against like carries late game or solo carries or something, this could be potentially really good. More. Can't reapply it. Oh, never mind. I was gonna say that was crazy. Okay, so you can actually perma disarm somebody, and it lowers their armor by six, which is just gonna increase your damage. So that if you want to do this afterwards, you can. But keep in mind that most of the way that you do damage with Swashbuckle is magic, with magic procs from things like this. Okay. All this magic damage won't be amplified, but the physical damage your Swashbuckle does do it will be amplified. Oh wow. For some reason I thought it would be really short, not like the full range. Which means that now getting this talent, which I accidentally already got, will be better. That's why it was so big actually, because I accidentally picked that talent. Free spells. I think this is really cool. This is certainly viable. Like this is so many, this is like so much fucking damage. You can already get so much damage with Swashbuckle. Naturally, let's uh, try this again with um, without the talent. Man, it's still really big. Like you can push so fast with this. Your mana pool is still gonna have issues, obviously, but. You just do some like, like two, oh it's right, it's only two hits, not, it's not four, I forgot. So it's not quite as good as I said it would be. Because you're only increasing your swash by two. But you're also doing 300 damage, so. I mean it's basically like what, 70, it's like 150 physical guaranteed. Um, On a javelin. These give 25 per attack, so it's like 50 more damage per javelin magic. It's potentially a lot of damage, especially with like one kicking bar and stuff. It's like 75 damage per attack on average. Yes. So if you do some crap like this or something, it's uh, it's potentially a lot. Oops. I don't know. It's it's a lot of damage potentially. I could see it as like a third damage item kind of a thing, because you can also do the shield crash cooldown and ball. If you ever want to go ags, you would just get that talent. And you just use that every two seconds in a team fight. Like you could do so much damage in a team fight. Like uh Carry Pangolier's gotta be back. 
Um, all right, let's go to the next section. I don't think we'll see a lot of Panglers rush that item, but we'll definitely see some like Lake M ones, I think. I think people will be more willing to go for a carry Pangolier because of the fact that um, they won't just be reliant on their swashbuckle cooldown and whether or not that hits because now they'll be able to use the jump as the uh, shield crash as well. Gives you more burst damage, lets you get more solo kills, makes buying more damage items worth it. Uh, PA Scepter Blur now has instant cast time and applies a dispel. Anytime you hit get a hero kill, your abilities are refreshed. So it's basically like Overwatch when you're playing Genji or whatever, right? Um, reduces blur cooldown to 12 seconds. Wow. It's going to be really fucking annoying to play against. Applies a dispel. So if she is slowed, taking damage over time ability, she's going to blur that shit off. 12 seconds? It's an ags. She's spending 4,000 gold on an item that isn't damaged. So it's not a big deal, actually. But um, definitely a really good Roche benefit, for sure. Hero kill abilities refreshed. You could basically just sit there and just toss daggers. But it's hero kills. Blink Strikes especially. I think Blink Strike is the bigger one. Blur instant cast time, easier to dodge spells, that kind of a thing. You also don't have to stop moving to use it. So, Definitely not something a PA is going to want to buy ever, probably. Probably ever, genuinely ever. It's not worth the gold. It's like another one of those things where it's like, this is good, but it costs you 4,000 gold. Uh, this one is not going to be good. But, um, I mean, if it's free... You shouldn't give it to PA, I don't think, ever. Like, I'm sure there's support ags that are going to be way better than this one, but whatever. Uh, strength gain buff, agility gain buff, tiny buffs. Space strength by two. Supernova causes your abilities to refresh on cast rather than at the end of the spell. Okay. That means that if you cast Supernova and your egg dies and you buy back, your abilities are off cooldown. Uh, is there any other way that it matters? I think that's it. Same for your, whoever you bring into the egg with you. If you guys die in the egg, then your abilities are still off cooldown. So it refresh items? It doesn't, right? It also now also allows you... Oh! Now also allows you to cast Sunray and turn its direction while in Supernova. So you can Supernova and Sunray. This is the purpose of the refresh. This is actually pretty good, I would argue. It's casting Sunray while... Normally you Supernova and you're like, okay, hope it goes well. But now at least you can like Sunray an ally or something. Or sunray somebody attacking you is another way to defend yourself. I think this uh, people buy eggs already a little bit sometimes. It's just going to make it a little bit better. Won't be common, but it's uh, definitely an option. Uh, puck intelligence gain increased from 3.1 to 3.5. Uh, strength gain up a little. Pudge base end up a little. Level 15 talent increased. Yeah, that, that talent really sucked. I don't think it was very good at all. That'll put his rot slow at... I don't remember. It's like 50 or something. 32 plus 12 is like 40... It's like 44%. It was pretty crappy. Now it goes up to 48%. Like the spell Lifesteal one is just so much better. Because Pudge is like a snowball hero, you know? But 16% rot slow is 46... I'm sorry, 48%. Yeah, 48% slow. It's pretty damn good. It would definitely justify it a little bit more. Uh, base end means more hooks before you need mana regen. It's fine. Um, it'll be useful against like silencers and stuff like that that drain your mana. Base mana regen, agility gain goes up, an agile pile of bones, netherward mana loss increased by just a little bit. Eye of the Storm Scepter no longer increases attack rate, and now hits up to two different units. Now hits up to two different units strike instead of one. That's, is that poor English? Am I wrong? Still affects buildings. Um, okay. So basically... Rather than being really good against one unit, it makes you more of an AoE hero, which is fine. I think that's good. Because, um, like, before, if you buy Ags and you don't static link the guy that you really want to kill, then it just kind of becomes bad, because it's going to hit creeps a lot. But if it hits two things, and there's a lot of creeps, the creeps are going to die faster. It could also affect two heroes instead of just one. I think this is nice. It's less cheesy, but it's probably still good. And there's still the cooldown reduction talent at 20 if you really want it. Like, this is probably more usable. I don't think we're going to see it get used. Like, you could kill lots of building. You could kill a Rax way faster with it. For sure, because you're doubling your damage. Well, it's not true. Because the interval... They have to change this tooltip. It's wrong. 
says the strike interval reduces cooldown. It would increase the damage by the attack going up by like 20%. But it's probably better. Probably better. Uh, Ricky base damage increased by 3. Agility gain increased for Rubik, surprisingly. Intelligence gain for Shadow Demon. Mana region for SF. Strength gain up. Agility gain up. Tiny little buffs. Um, Ether Shock. We haven't seen stacking changes in a while, but these are changing things a little. Um, Ether Shock mana cost rescaled. This is it. That's it for the nerf. Okay. Barely a nerf. Five mana level one. Shaman's really good right now. I'm surprised it wasn't more than this. It's pretty small. Uh, Silencer based attack speed increased. I mean, Shaman does have some mana problems, but like late game, it's the same anyways. I don't know. It's almost nothing. Silencer based attack speed increase by 15. Maybe they only barely nerf Shaman because so many supports are getting these like attack speed bonuses. So, um, they're basically saying like we actually don't know what supports are going to be the best now. So, we just buffed a lot of them in small amounts, and maybe Shaman won't be as good anymore. This is actually kind of big though. Silencer core could be better. 15 attack speed is not nothing. Could make your second skill way better. Um, Ancient Seal cast range increased a little. Concussive of shot mana cost goes down a little. Pretty inconsequential. The Ancient Seal one's probably the better of the two, I would argue. Although you do use Concussive Shot in the leaning stage. Um, Slardar Scepter upgrade. Slithering Crush now creates a puddle of water that is considered a river for bonuses. Okay. 25 HP regen, 12 armor, 40% stats resistance while in a puddle or river. In addition to the normal Guardian Sprint bonus. Wow. Puddle AoE is 550. It lasts for 25 seconds. That is, that's not bad. So basically, once you initiate, if you if you get like a blink dagger and you initiate, it's pretty damn good for your team. Status resistance to reduce stuns. Twelve armor is quite a lot. Twenty five HP regen's a lot. And you're gonna run at like max speed once you get bonuses. Uh, passively provides extra movement speed in the river with unlocked max speed, rather than a fixed seven hundred at level four. So basically, they made it so like you don't have to just get level four sprint for this to be really good. Like you actually get benefits just from every level you get. It's kind of bad level one, but level two becomes a lot better. Um, so there's no more max speed. And you get up to 50% bonus in rivers and puddles. Uh, we got to see what this looks like for sure. Uh, lower the cooldown instead of the stun duration, which puts it at really low, three and a half second cooldown. This sounds very interesting. Um, basically means that you're going to have less mobility problems, arguably. So is this just a passive now? It's not. It's still going to be a movement speed bonus, like normal. But it also, my movement speed should increase down here by 5%. It does. Just a little bit faster. Oops. Ooh. 350 with two points. 375, that's like way faster actually. And I can still boost this up again, but it's not gonna give me like as big of a value. It doesn't say what the river moving speed is naturally, but it's definitely a lot better. Anyways, let's make bottles. That's a big old puddle. So, um, I mean, it's like, that's a lot of movement speed. I'm talking 100 movement speed here. So now when you initiate and stun a guy, you're gonna be able to chase him a lot easier. It's not like, uh, even if Guardian Sprint runs out, like this is without Guardian Sprint actually, I'm at 440. That lasts very long. I don't necessarily think Ags is gonna be justified, but it could be something like, I don't know, maybe you go like Blink Ags or something. You go like, and fighting, fighting, fighting. Cause now you're just, able to kite around a lot more. It becomes this like area where they have to get out of so that you just don't have this like overwhelming haste all the time. That I could see as justified. And it gives you armor and it gives you regen. It's just like a it's like literally like a let's let's fight item. It it actually solves so many problems if you think about it. Like look look, look at the bonuses. It's like do you have armor problems? We got you. Do you have regen problems? We got you. Do you have are they going to stun you? We got you. It's like you don't need to buy BKB necessarily. You don't necessarily need to buy armor if they have a hard carry. You don't necessarily need to worry about your HP regen. It's like just get in there and fight. Just blink eggs, guys. Just do it. 
I think this is a really nice change to the hero. It doesn't it just requires a little bit less. Like I, I think I would definitely still buy blink. That way you could like blink and puddle and initi initiate on the guy you want. But um, you might be able to get away without it. You wouldn't want to buy. I don't, I don't think you'd want to ever buy ags without blink or shadow blade. But it it could be a cool follow up that doesn't force you to go like four staff or something. Oh, I forgot to check the. I mean, it's a three and a half second cooldown with a one second stun. It's it's good. What's the other 25? Uh, Crows over here. Those are both pretty good. Those are both really good. Three and a half second, one second stun. AoE. That's bonkers. All right. Slark base attack speed increased by 20. Um, Shadow Dance passive health regen rescaled 2% more at the first level. I think that's needed because his health, he doesn't regen very fast at six. It takes a little bit of time. Like if you stand out of combat, basically. I think upping it a little bit is is fine. Shadow Dance Scepter range increased. Nobody is going to buy that still. Although they might now with the with the Roche one. That's really what changed all this, honestly. Like, nobody's going to spend 6,000 gold on the Ags upgrade most of the time. But if it's free, they're like, all right. That's like what you basically have to do for pro players. You have to be like, look, it's fucking free. Somebody use it. Let's see these Let's see these work, you know. Um, added Scepter upgrade grants you a new ability. Shadow Step allows you to perform a single target unit haunt. That's really good. Because most of the time you're haunting one guy anyways. Sometimes. Not always. Um, sorry, I dropped something. Like late game, um, the, the team fight haunt is obviously still really good. I guess early game haunt is more of a single target ability. But how do you even do this? Single target unit haunt? Do you like click on the map or something? Do you have to see them? How does this work? Single unit, good points, not hero. Can I target the ground? I can't. Can't target creeps. So you have to be able to see them. Is what seems clear. So I'm not going to be able to click it on him once he goes out of fog, I'm sure. But once I do see him. Obviously I can do this. Or I could do this. It's kind of cool. Um, Might be viable. It is a health item. It's not a massive health item. The mana is a little bit irrelevant. Um, could justify you getting more haunt illusion damage. Is I think another reason they put this in, because the twenty five talent is a little underused. The right side one. Uh, but I think it's kind of cool. I mean, as you level it up, could make your illusions more real. Their attacks, does their attack speed go up with your attack speed? I can't remember. It should, right? Yeah, it does. It's cool. It's, uh, I think the cooldown is semi-balanced. I mean, it's global. I guess maybe it's not, but... It's gonna be so much easier to, like, buy back and stuff. Die back? You don't even have to haunt now. You could, like, haunt... You could basically haunt during the team fight, die, uh, buyback and then still come back with shadow step. It's it's really good. The only the the major the major negative is that again four thousand gold on a non item, and it usually takes Spectre a while to get six slotted anyway. So I don't think we'll see a lot of like luxury purchases of this, but there definitely could be times where they buy it. So I, I think it's cool. Yeah, you could definitely sell the axe. Spectre. Okay, what do we got? Um, Spirit Breaker. Base health regen increased. Bulldoze status resistance increased. Bulldoze movement speed increased by a little bit. Um, Greater Bash. Stun duration rescaled, so it's worse level 1. The damage does go up, though. I think that's going to be a good trade-off, because level 1, 8% 8 was really garbage. Charger Darkness. Mana cost reduced. I think this is really good. Now the Strike cast range goes up. 
the strike scepter radius increased as well. I don't think I've ever bought ag I bought ags like once or twice, maybe on the hero. That's a pretty big radius. 350 is not bad. You could definitely ulti like multiple heroes now. But it'll be better at fighting level one with Bash than before. Um yeah, just make him. I, I, I'm open to playing the hero. It's probably not good, but Techie's more mana regen. Uh, Templar Assassin Scepter upgrade. A new ability Psionic Projection allows you to teleport to any Psionic trap after a two second channel. Ugh. Does not break meld. I'm cringing because I don't want to experience this. 100 mana is a lot. Detonates the Psionic trap on arrival. Okay. So it could be obvious. It's obvious, basically. If you see the trap explode, you know that Templar is either fucking with you or she's there. It doesn't break meld. So if they stand on a trap, basically, if you anticipate it two seconds ahead of time, you can teleport to it. It's very, yeah, it is definitely very much like Ember Spirit. You could basically move around the map really quickly and get kills. Again, 4,000 gold. Um, NTA is definitely a hero who wants to keep buying items, damage items, otherwise you're not going to be able to burst people. But you could split push. This is some real ninja shit, basically. You could split push really easily with this. So you pick Lycan, guys. You buy Axe. You pick Templar Assassin. You buy Axe. You pick Drow. You buy Axe. Uh, you don't need Axe. You press your press your R button, or your your E button. Push all the lanes, and all of a sudden there's just a Templar hitting your base with a, with a Deso and an Axe. And then when you come to Ganker, she teleports him or something. I don't know. Um, Terrorblade, Scepter. After casting meta, wave travels outwards in all directions, causing enemy heroes to become feared for three seconds upon impact. Okay. Wave starts at 0.6 and has a travel speed of 1,000. That's fast. Spell immune units do not get hit by the wave. Has a global sound effect. Reflection no longer affects illusions. Hey, they fixed it, guys. They found a way. They're like, I, I, I figured it out, guys. It's not going to affect illusions. In some ways, that's a buff. You're going to be able to figure out who is the real hero when you use Reflection now. If there's a CK or whatever else, PL. Although you can still dispel it. So, slight buff. It's it's most, it's definitely a nerf. But I think it's for the best. Reflection is obnoxious. Naga, that's a good example. Yeah, I'll definitely demo what this looks like. Let's, let's check it out. No more PL counter. It wasn't really the best PL counter anyways. I feel like PLs were beating TB's late game once they added mana back into Sunder, but I might be wrong. Interesting. I mean, Terrorblades are not going to want to spend 4,000 gold on this pretty much ever. So I'm a little unsure that this will ever be... It's a really big AoE, and that's that's three seconds. I mean, that's a three second stun, guys. Yeah, free eggs, of course. Anything free is not bad. In the right lineup, this could be kind of cool, but 4,000 gold is a lot. Well, one, one thing that is nice about it is it's a lot of raw health, and this hero has garbage health. It's 10 to all attributes, it's not terrible. Um, but yeah, it gives you what? Um, almost 400 health, but, um, uh, support TB is not a thing, guys, sorry. It's like just one, so it kind of tells you which one's the real one, I guess, but. Yeah. Who knows, Mars ulti, yeah, could work with Mars. Um, it's gonna make blink. I mean, you could team fight with it potentially. It's a, it's a stun, you know. If you like blink and then use that with like a Scotty or something, you can kill heroes for sure. Tide gush upgrade radius increased a little bit, and the distance increased. Tide eggs is good. I think it's fine. Uh, timber pretty crappy win rates. Strength growth up, base armor up, intelligence up. Ten talent. Okay, yeah, this, this talent was really garbage. Six percent spell amp didn't feel good. This talent didn't feel amazing either. Health is nice. That way if you go... I mean, you, you probably buy health no matter what, but if you go some utility item first, like Yules or something, you could justify the health talent to help keep your health 
higher. Um, yeah, spell amp was kind of garbage. Mana regen I think is nice. Makes you less reliant on some builds. Fifteen is reactive armor to plus eight and spell amp. Yeah, ten percent is a lot more reasonable than six. Six felt like it's not that far from ten and all, but it just felt kind of like why you know. 100 damage is nice for hitting towers, but it doesn't fit the hero, really. Like, a lot of his talents just felt really garbage. Cooldown reduction is good. Spell amp is really good. 10 feels so much better. It's two digits, you know? It's like twice as good as six. Eight reactive armor stacks is kind of irrelevant. It depends on the lineup. If it's like lots of summons and stuff, it's good. Um, but, oh, 2.5 mana region can also be doubled once you get bloodstone. So that one's pretty, pretty solid if you get bloodstone. Uh, yeah, his talents are a lot better now. I, th I think I like these. Uh, Tinker base regen, int gain increased. More spell amp at 10, and more cast range at 10, uh, 10 also. Better 10 talents. 100 cast range is pretty good. Intelligence growth goes up. Added scepter upgrade grants you a new channeling ability, tree volley. I know you, I, people have been saying it's bugged in chat. I'm sure I'm going to have to restart Dota to see if it's fixed. Uh, every 0.4 seconds, a random tree within 525 range of your hero will be thrown towards the targeted AoE. Deals 120% of your damage to enemies in that area. Target AoE 400. Cast range 1300. Some attack on Titan shit right here. Uh, cast range 1300. Max channel 2.4 seconds. Cooldown is 12. Mana cost 150. This seems pretty good. Seems like really good. You can run out of trees, but you can sprout. Tree gap cooldown reduced a little. Grow armor increased again. 10 armor. That's crazy. Crazy good. All right, let's crash my game. Not really the NP counter. It's more like you need, you need trees. Um, where are the trees at, guys? I mean, you can use it to break trees. You're definitely right about that. It's basically like your attack speed is 0.4 seconds. And obviously you need... What's, what's the actual cast range? I wish it didn't show... Five, 525 is like... It's not huge. And then it runs out. It's it's not bad. It's definitely not bad. Especially because you're getting bonus damage raw from Grow. 30 damage talent looks a lot better. Like going some right click build with Ags looks pretty reasonable. Oh, and this is the Ags actually effect. Which I, I forgot to pay attention to that, but I've actually been noticing this. I just assumed it was like a compendium. 1300 cast range. Is it? It doesn't seem like it, guys. Is it bugged? Oh, that's a good point. Treat it with respawn trees. It doesn't seem like it's 1300. Throw six trees max. So it's like six auto attacks plus, well, that's like 720% damage of your regular damage. Hypothetically, you do something like this. It's definitely cool. I like it. It's uh, definitely interesting. Low cooldown. The mana cost is really high, actually. 150 is a shitload. Anyways, uh, yeah, the cooldown. It being a low cooldown, I think, is really nice. I think it's it's good because there's gonna be a lot of times where it's like, oh, there's like one tree near you or something, or two trees, and you only throw you throw less than you desire. But it, you could definitely buy. You could also buy ags on this hero, in combo with like avatar stuff. Where you just kind of become like, continue to be like a nuker guy. Do some stuff like this. You just run around with like, I don't know, probably blink first and then... Who knows. You could do some shit like this, you know? 
It's cool. Definitely gives you a, an, a really good item follow-up after blink. That's only going to increase your damage more. And then if you get 10... Oh, 30 more damage. For tree volley. It's cool. It's a damage tower, so let's find out. Probably not. It does not. Okay. I'm sure that if you plant a branch, you're going to be able to throw it. Because it counts as a tree. It's also not interesting enough to bother doing it, because having one tree doesn't like massively change anything. Test it yourself, suckers. Okay. Tree, base mana regen, nature's guys reworked. Okay. Self-cast ability with a cast time. No longer has a fade delay, nor gets interrupted on damage taken. No longer has a fade delay, nor gets interrupted. Uh, on damage taken. Goes on cooldown after the invisibility buff ends. Okay, so... Let's just demo it. It's definitely very similar to old um, Nature's Guys. Good thing I didn't make a Tree and Protector replay commentary the other day. So you will cast mana on, you will cast on yourself, and you are just like fucking invisible, basically. And the root duration is the same. Oh, it's just instant actually. The cast time is long, but you're instantly invis. And as soon as it, okay, so it's kind of like Charge of Darkness, it'll go on cooldown after you end with it. You can get it very low, down to 4 seconds, which is about what it was before. Uh, that's actually not true, it was 2.5 at max level. So it's going to be harder to like, perma root people, and it costs mana to cast the damn thing. And you have to stay near trees to even cast in the first place. But you can go invisible a lot easier. The most annoying part is that when you're running around invading enemy territory that it's going to cost you more mana. It's going to cost you mana actually. Sometimes you're going to get wrecked like that and be like, fuck, I'm on cooldown for eight more seconds. So you're going to have to be a lot more careful. In some ways, you could maybe argue that movement speed is less important. It's not really true, though. So your hero is still really slow. You do get the movement speed bonus to level one, though. It's 20 instead of 14. That's kind of nice. It's very nice, actually. Um, so you definitely don't need as many points of this if you don't want it. Like, you really just need to get, like, Tranquils and a Windlace. And one point in this. So you could definitely go more like a 144 if you want, arguably. Mana cost is low, cooldown's obviously not as good. Damage is better at level one. I don't think I don't know if I'd want to get this. Level one. I probably still would to be honest. It's still sixty magical damage. It's like a nuke. Even the second point is not bad, one ten. Used to be ninety. It's definitely going to make you a little bit less mana. It basically makes you less reliant on abusing trees. Because before, like, you had to have the trees to do anything good with it, but now it's basically easier to go and visit when on your terms. It has really good movement speed right off the bat, so it's more of a one-point wonder skill in terms of what it does, which is being invisible, moving around. You should still be able to run through trees and stuff. So it's, like, still... It's basically better at doing the defensive and scouting aspects that it was before with a low mana cost. It just doesn't do it from, it just doesn't cost nothing. The cooldown is punishing if you mess it up and it costs mana, but you get decent damage. It's basically, it's, it's a much better level one skill, without a doubt. More damage, more movement speed, an extra 6%, it's kind of a lot. So it shouldn't take as many items for you to be able to like get across tree gaps, arguably with as many points. So you can basically put more points into Leech Seed and Living Armor if it if it suits you. I definitely won't feel the need to level this up super fast anymore, I feel like. But you will need more mana regen on the hero, for sure. That's why they increase his mana regen, probably. Leech Seed is a lot of mana. You'll definitely need a little bit of passive regen, maybe more clarities. 
but realistically in the laning stage you don't need that much mana regen anyways like uh you use leech seed obviously but um nature's guys like level one it's not gonna hurt you at all to use this mana so i think this is probably good it might be a little bit of a nerf but it's also gonna be defensively it's gonna be way better if you ever take damage it's gonna be like hard it's gonna be basically it's gonna be more annoying to kill trino and he can basically decide like do i want to be invisible or do I want to break invis to hit a guy and then be defenseless for 10 seconds? More like Ricky now, kind of, if that makes sense. So the playstyle is going to be a little bit different. It's going to be kind of easier to punish. You're either going to see him. If, if, he, if he's not invis, you're going to see him, and he's going to be able to run away, unless you have dust. Um, but at least you'll know he's there, you know? It's not like he's always just going to be invisible for free. And if he wants to save it as like a, I want to go invisible if shit hits the fan, then he has to be visible. So it has, it ha it's like you can play around it differently. Whereas before it's like he's just always invisible, period. So I think this is ultimately good for the hero. And based on how this adjusts his strength, they're going to be able to buff and nerf in other ways that'll make it more, feel a little bit less weird, I think. All right, uh, Troll Warlord Scepter upgrade. Reduces battle trance cooldown to 35 seconds and allows it to be cast on allied or enemy heroes. Last half duration on enemies. That's... Really, really good potentially. Uh, 35 seconds. So basically you could make an enemy unkillable, but it would force them to attack on one of your team mates. Basically, it's, it's, it's in some ways like a stun, kind of. That's not true. They can still use their spells. They can still use their spells. They can't use their items. So you could use it as a um, BKB solution or an item solution against enemy heroes, especially if they don't attack very well or do a lot of right-click damage, like let's say an Ember Spirit or something like that. If it's somebody that you know you can beat, you can kind of use it as like a duel, you know? Yeah, you can. Be, it's basically a duel. It would last for, what, three seconds? Or you could use it on allies to keep them alive in right circumstances. But 35 second cooldown is actually pretty good. I could, I could easily see pro players putting this on a Troll Warlord late game. That feels like it has a lot of really good uses. I mean, the life steal is good too, I guess. So there's maybe, maybe it's not the best, but um, does it stop TVs? Probably yes. I would imagine it does. Um, Tusk level twenty challenge change. They moved the shards to twenty. They moved. They created a new snowball cooldown. Walrus punch pseudo random. That means you can prep it off uh, creep attacks. Let's snowball cool on 18 seconds. Yeah, 18. You can put it down to 10. That's pretty good. Better than the ice shards for sure. The ice shards one is good, but it's not like super busted. You could like perma shard somebody in. I like that it's at 20 though. Because 20 is like a super reasonable with with the 40% experience gain, and maybe more tusks will do this now. I don't know if they will. 90 GPM is kind of a lot. But 40% experience gain if you're doing well, you can get to 20 really quick. You could have ice shards on an eight second cooldown. You could like constantly be messing with team fights if you're good. The 20 talent feels like really good now, in my opinion. And then snowball cooldown if you want to be able to defend allies more. 10 seconds, it's pretty good. Blink in, use snowball, hide for three seconds, pop out, you'd have seven seconds cooldown, it's good. 15% walrus chances, or wal walrus punch is not bad either, though. Okay, looks like they're updating the client again. We are almost done here. Not the biggest patch, but pretty solid. Uh, Underlord uh, Pit of Malice radius increased a little bit. Uh, cooldown has decreased by two seconds. It's fine. Soul Rip, cast point improved. Tombstone zombies now treat illusions like creeps. Okay, requiring two hits. Basically, you can't, like, doppelgang on a tomb and kill it instantly anymore. So uh, Tombstone is, Undying is going to be better against Illusion Heroes. And Tombstone takes one-fourth damage from Creeps and Illusions. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, I misread. Yes, uh, Illusions will take, will deal half as much damage to a Tomb. And the Zombies will require two hits from an Illusion instead of just one. So basically just Tomb is way better at not being countered by Illusions than it was before. 
it's still kind of good against like PL it's still bad because he's got so many illusions but against like anybody with a Manta style it's not like as much of a instant counter I'm always down for Undying buffs I'm a big fan of the Undying man uh, Eventual Spirit another swap now is a cooldown to prevent accidental uses okay that sounds fine um, that'll. This is a nice improvement for bad players, basically. Uh, Venomancer base int increased. Base attack speed increased. The Poison Sting slow time. That one's really good. I actually get that one sometimes. I mean, that's so much slow. 29% slow. 29% slow from Poison Sting. For 15 seconds. That one's not bad, man. It's like a free Scotty. Like, the Gel one's definitely really solid. But I'm a big fan of this. Uh, visage base resistance. Congrats, Visage. You are less garbage in ability draft. Welcome. Um, so Visage can be a lot better against magic nukes now. Summon familiar's health rescaled a little bit too. A little buff there. So how does this work? It's just like raw damage reduction now. So it like blocks a, a flat percentage of damage basically. He's just he's just got really bad armor now. But he's got normal magic resistance. Good for you, Visage. And where else are we at? Uh, ooh, there's a lot of heroes left, actually. Warlock. Chaotic Offering now lands the second goal in point four. Okay. So basically it does a little bit more stun. I think the stun is like, what, one second or something? So just slight uh, stun increase for Chaotic Offering, which is nice. Uh, it does mean the second goal will attack a little bit slower. He won't attack at the same time, so that could be a negative, but... More stun duration is not bad, and fatal bonds count rescaled, and they've so they put it back to like the. I mean, they when they changed this originally, I thought it was kind of a good thing because it was better for the laning stage. But in terms of harassment, it's not. It wasn't as good because you can't link to as many creeps. But you could definitely. It basically allows you as warlock to feel justified and not maxing fatal bonds. Because before it was like if you had like two fatal bonds, it didn't feel very good. It's part of the issue. It's like, okay, so basically the previous Fatal Bonds, it felt really value if you caught it on, like, during the laning stage, it felt pretty value if you caught it on, like, all heroes. But it felt really bad in team fights if it wasn't maxed out. Whereas now, it's still going to feel pretty good in team fights, even if it's not maxed out. You could even justify not maxing it out, depending on the game. Which is going to make you feel more comfortable only putting, like, two points into Fatal Bonds. That sounds reasonable to me. Because with two points, it's only it's like a 50%. You're getting like 50% value with each additional skill point, which isn't that great. So you're getting like 25% more damage per skill point, which is kind of mediocre sometimes. Um, Yeah, that's how I digest that. But definitely worse in the laning stage. It's better for like linking people to creeps, for sure. But it's probably actually about the same if you get them in a creep wave. It's probably about the same, math-wise. Because you're getting double as many units linked, but it's doing about half as much damage, so it's probably about the same. Uh, level 25 talent increased. It'll be better for comboing it with like AoE heroes. If an, if your hero does AoE to all of the creeps, Fatal Bonds will be better. Because before, it's like it would link like two of the creeps. And you would have to do all the damage to those two creeps, which encourages single target damage to be effective with Fatal Bonds in the laning stage. But now that it hits all the creeps, any AoE is going to be better. So this is definitely a... It's probably a laning stage buff. For the typical types of damage people do in the laning stage, which is AoE. Because everyone's single target is pretty weak with like right clicks and stuff. So I think this is just overall a buff. It's a laning buff and it's a skill point buff in mid game. And this is like small but fine. Uh, Golem armor 25 at 25. As it should be. Uh, Weaver more base mana regen. Which helps you refresh after using Sakuchi a bunch. Base attack speed increased. So nice. Rework Scepter. Two charges to wind run and increases the movement speed by 45. Okay, uh, I like this. I think this is okay. Um, I, I do like Wind Ranger Scepter, but it's like you basically have to buy a late game because your cooldown was 70. It was kind of stupid. It was like you have to buy Ags so that you could use Focus Fire more than once. And now it's just like more of a reasonable cooldown. And by the way, you also get a 30% cooldown reduction, which is going to reduce your cooldown down to 21 seconds if you get that, which is super reasonable in my opinion. Um, and the scepter adds two charges to wind run and bo boost the movement speed. Oh no, they removed the wind run slow, the talent that I got sometimes. Change it to a minus two second shackle shot cooldown and 25 talent. 
Yeah, this money stone focus fire one is just not never going to be good. Minus 20% focus fire. Okay, so you can go this if you want your focus fire to do more damage. So Ag's Des uh, Ag Daedalus is gone. I don't know if I like this. Ag's change. I think it's fine that they removed it because just leveling up your... Just leveling up basically is going to make you better. But I don't think I like this too much. Oh, the move speed bonus is always 60. On my way. Let's get some boots. My oh, and you're not capped anymore either, apparently. Like the wind. I think this is garbage. Well... It's good with a 20 talent, I guess. It's kind of abusive with that. Without that, I would say this is fucking garbage. Shackle Sock cooldown, you can go down to 8 seconds. So you could up your duration to 4.8 with an 8 second cooldown. Oh god, this is actually really abusive, potentially. What's our duration? God. Ugh, that's a dirty as fuck. I'm getting this shit. I I feel like I can get away with the mana not getting the mana regen talent sometimes. So I could see myself getting shackle shot cooldown. Winter Gen's invincibility is really good though and if you could use it to initiate get a kill and then invis again and run away it's potentially really good but i'm not sure that's worth four thousand gold oh, my client's out of date anyways let me just message him quick i'll play a game and i'm almost done uh shit. i need like four minutes i think Okay, uh, but I think the Ags is probably bad. I, I just, I think it's overkill. Like there's so many good solutions to evasion right now that like, yeah, it does make you really fast, I guess, which is kind of cool. Like you could, in some ways I, I would like, I, I would say like buy Ags over Blink Dagger maybe, but because then your item slots are going to be a lot better because Wind Ranger buys too many items that are low cost kind of, so you run out of like slots really fast. So I can see Ags being a good uh, solution to um, not wanting to get Blink Dagger, even though it's really expensive. But um, man, that shackle shot, that was kind of crazy. Get to practice all your shackles. Uh, Arctic Burn, Scepter, Mana Cost per Second Reduce. This is good. Um, I've, I've played around with this a little bit, and it does drain your mana a little bit too fast. I don't, I don't think we'll see any players buying the item. It's kind of useless. It's just like it's it's almost always not worth getting. Um, Death Ward damage increased by ten at all levels. That's nice. Zeus Banner regen base, attack point improved. This is nice. It'll be easier to last hit and ten talent changed. You remove the armor. What? I always got the armor. Valve, how dare you? Okay, just because every every player that plays Zeus gets the experience talent. I'm I've this is the first time I felt really wronged by this. Almost every time that they do something like this, I'm like nobody use that talent. But this time, I was the one guy who was like, fucking buy Veil, get six armor, I don't die anymore. But noobs will love this for sure. Noobs will definitely love this. I don't even know if I'm going to get the mana regen talent. I don't like either of these now. I liked my, I want the armor back, dude. I fucking loved armor. Man, I, I, I genuinely don't even care for the mana regen talent. Anyways, well, that's it for the patch, guys. Uh, experience gain is the way to go. It is. Thanks, thanks, Lovelux. Made uh, made your day after missing out on TI tickets. Sorry, you didn't, couldn't get tickets. That sucks. Um, let me update. I'll play a game of slacks. See what happens. Witch Doctor Medallion. Witch Doctor Medallion has always been good. That's a good build. I've been a big fan of that one for a long time. 
quick overall reaction to the patch. Uh, there was not, like, there weren't any, like, super, super big changes. The Monkey King eggs definitely seems pretty good. Um, let me open up the webpage so I can read these while we're waiting. Where the game to launch? Um, some of the tower changes are big. Like, I think this is, what's kind of nice about this patch is they packed in a lot of stuff. They packed in a lot of stuff that isn't going to break the game, but it's still fun to try out. Because right now, like, the, they probably don't want to mix up the game a huge amount because there's another major coming. I mean, it's in a month, but, like, and enough of these changes are interesting enough that it'll be fun to play around with a little bit. But it's not going to, like, massively change the game. Um, like, the Roshan eggs change is really fun. It's not going to change pro games a shitload. Because it's like three roaches in, four roaches in. Does Morph now get Ags upgrades from enemy heroes? Uh, probably not. I don't know. Maybe. But probably not. Yeah, only if the, the Ags upgrade to their ability would be the, one of his basic skills is probably it. We could probably test it, I guess. Um, Scotty change. Helm of the Dominator was maybe one of the bigger changes. It's kind of a big nerf. Any mage eggs could be really viable. I think. Dang it, it jumped again. Um, let's see, any other ones? So right, Axe Master. Um, I think Brood Eggs uh, is pretty big, potentially. Chaos Knight Eggs is situationally good. Chen is going to be probably worse on paper, but I, I like this playstyle more, so I'm not upset. Um, I think Clink's Eggs is potentially viable. Clockwork probably still garbage, um, but he won't get outlined as much. I think the the profit change is really cool. I definitely want to play profit. Go like, I don't know blood. I don't know if bloodstone into eggs. Atos is still really good. Interrupt TPs that kind of a thing. Probably still have to get Atos. I don't know. I don't know if you can go Bloodstone eggs. It's so expensive. That's like 10,000 gold before you can do anything really good. Is why that's kind of garbage. Veil is still kind of good on her. You can go like Medallion Solar Crest is still really good. It's hard it's hard not to just go the standard items that are really cheap like the 2,000 gold items that give you so much compared to something like Bloodstone. Um Wind Ranger Octarine, yeah. I mean, you could perma shackle somebody. You're not wrong. Octarine's really expensive. It's really, really expensive. Um, Dragonite eggs. Is he actually still in this game? Okay. How is 100% slow different from a stun? The, the most you can be slowed is down to 100 movement speed. And even if you're slowed, that doesn't prevent you from casting spells, attacking, using items. Stuns prevent you from casting spells, using st uh, abilities, using items, turning your hero, all that stuff. Prevents like all action from you. Whereas slows do not. They just prevent you from moving rapidly. Sometimes affect your movement speed. Yeah, DK eggs is probably good because getting the the dragon um, would actually turn your hero into like an actual real, a really obnoxious team fighter because you'd be able to slow people by a lot. Magnus still garbage, or still empower machine, nothing else. Um, line still playable. 
Chakra magic, a little bit fun. Like, a lot of heroes got buffed. But most of these are just playstyle options. Um, Elder Titan. His eggs change is pretty cool. Hey, did you ever eat your food? Did you eat your food? Can I see? Oh, I see you licking your lips now. Let me use my eyes. Oh, you literally didn't touch your food yet. Come on, go eat. Do you want to go eat? I shouldn't give you a treat because you're you haven't eaten your breakfast or your dinner, but Wow, how did you know? Hello. Sit. Sit down. Sit down. You're learning. No, sit down. Sit down. Sit. Sit. Wait. Chair. Don't eat my pot pie. Okay. Okay, you're free. Well, that was fun, guys. The patch. 